1985, last 15 seconds of the first class between Georgia Southern and Furman, Eagle quarterback Tracy Ham hit Frankie Johnson for the game-winning touchdown. Georgia Southern edged the Paladins 44-42, capping a furious 38-point second-half flurry and adding to the legend of Eagle coach Irk Russell. Three years later, title game again, Eagles expecting another last-second miracle. Quarterback Raymond Gross down by five, driving for the game winner. But Furman All-American linebacker Jeff Blankenship intercepting and sealing the 17-12 win, the first national championship for Furman and head coach Jimmy Satterfield. It's Georgia Southern and Furman round three next on Sports South. Tucked in the southern stem of the Appalachian Mountains in the upstate of South Carolina, it's picturesque Paladin Stadium, the setting for this first regular season meeting between the two most prolific football programs in 1AA college ball. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Phil Van Horn. Welcome to live college football coverage on Sports South. The two teams this afternoon, the first time they got together, they put college football on the map, 1AA football. Georgia Southern won. The next time they got together, 1988, Furman won and proved that it too belonged up on the Eagles' perch. And now meeting number three. Georgia Southern All-American Rex Nottage says Furman is our greatest rival they've never met in the regular season. Well, joining me this afternoon for today's game, longtime Atlanta Falcon player and veteran Atlanta broadcaster Jeff Van Noe. Jeff, both the coaches have been in big games before. Both have won national championships. How have they prepared for today's game? Well, I think Rex Nottage says it's their biggest rival, but you talk to Jimmy Satterfield, his coaches have tried to keep it on an even play they got seven more conference games in the Southern Conference to play, starting with VM ne VMI next week. So they're concerned about that. This is a big game for them, but not in the light of Rex Nottage putting it. At the same time, Georgia Southern, they're mad. They thought they should have won the championship in 88 when they played Furman. They're up here to prove a point as they enter the Southern Conference for full-time play next year. The big matchup shapes up as Georgia Southern's defense against Furman's offense. But as we look through the games, the one key to this game today, Georgia Southern's flex bone offense, the triple option. Well, bad to the bone. It's been inconsistent, to say the least, the first two games. They've had an extra week to prepare for Furman. They hope they've got the kinks out. And a mash bash. Here's a guy who's an All-American. This is his first start. He's been injured with an ankle. And if you look at two teams that match up evenly and offensively and defensively, maybe I think the return game or the kicking game, the special teams, that could make a difference. Turning to Furman, you look at Tremble spells Trumbull. Carl Trimble, their great All-American tailback. Georgia Southern's got to prevent him from getting outside. They've had some injuries to their quarterback. Hugh Swilling has an ankle injury. He has a history of injury in the past. Philly Jones, a young sophomore, gets the start. And any coach will tell you, if they can get three-plus turnovers in a the game, they should win that football game. Both the quarterbacks today, starting quarterbacks are sophomores. You look at Charles Bostic, simply put, he played poorly in game number one this year. Georgia Southern lost. Played well in game number two, and the Eagles won it. So as we look at key players, you've got to start off with Charles Bostic, the brilliant sophomore, the sometimes brilliant sophomore from Thomasville. Well, Charles Bostic, he, he follows the tradition of great quarterback play at Georgia Southern. You're looking at Tracy Ham. You're looking at Ray, Raymond Gross. So they need to get the play out of Charles Bostic much like those players in the past. Turning to James Williams, the fullback, you establish the option offense by running inside. They've got to get that going for them very early. And looking at, if you take care of Furman, Philly Jones, a young quarterback, he's played this offense, though, all through high school. He's a very fine player, very bright. His decision-making will be the difference for Furman. Coda Suttle, what a name for a linebacker. This guy will be all over the field. Uh, he could be one of the top defensive players in the country. Might be the top defensive player in the Southern Conference. Furman has had a fine defensive trench de tradition. In fact, the last four defensive players of the year in the Southern Conference, maybe Suttle will make it five. choice for business travelers is Holiday Inn because we offer the services and amenities you expect. You're greeted with a welcome reception. All right, thanks, Phil. Although we're standing here on South Carolina soil, this game has a distinct Georgia flavor to it. Fully two-thirds of the players you'll see here this afternoon hail from the Peach State. For Furman, that's almost half of their roster. 37 of 69 Paladins called Georgia home. For the Eagles, as you might expect, 47 of 57 players hail from the state of Georgia. One other sideline we'll be telling you about. We have five sets of high school teammates facing each other today. Now, the only pair that may match up on opposite sides of the ball, they hail from Clarkston High School in Georgia. That'll be Furman fullback O.J. Davis trying to steamroll his former high school teammate, Georgia Southern defensive back Brandon Roselle. 
We'll keep an eye on those guys, see if it's a friendly or not so friendly reunion later on during this game. Let's go back upstairs to Phil and Jeff. All right, Jim, that distinct Georgia flavor extends also to the Paladin sideline. Five Furman assistant coaches grew up in the state of Georgia, two coached high school ball in the Peach State. There's Tim Stowers, the head coach of Georgia Southern. His Eagles come into this game one-on-one, -on -one, lost the season opener to Florida A&M, made some improvements, beat Valdosta State, had a week off. His assistants came here last week, got a chance to see Furman play a week ago. In their last meeting, go back to that 1988 championship game in Pocatello, Idaho. Furman holding on for the victory, 17 to 12. The series tied at one all. Again, this is the first regular season meeting. You know, the first time they played, Jeff, all the way out in Tacoma. They played <laughs> two games, neither of which was east of the Mississippi. Tough to get your fans out there, that's for sure. <laughs> Georgia Southern set the kickoff this afternoon, doing the placement work for the Eagles. That's Reed Haley, and back to receive Mark Tate. Near the 20, dragged down at about the 17-yard line for the fired-up special teams unit of Georgia Southern. Well, that'll bring on Philly Jones, the starting quarterback for Furman. He's a sophomore, son of a high school coach. Philly Jones getting his second start of the year, 37 for 21. Jeff, a week ago, Philly Jones hit his first nine passes in his first start this year against Presbyterian College. And another thing to keep in mind, Georgia Southern's defensive backfield has been burned for touchdown passes the first two series of each game so far this year. So here's Jones on first down at his 17. Carl Tremble, the All-American back. Big hole. Tremble across the 20, up to the 22. Maybe a gain of five. Well, in front of Philly Jones, that offensive line, John Ludwig, Tommy Jones, talented player out of Snellville, Georgia, and Mendel Key, a big Brawny Sr. There's Philly Jones, Damon Bradley, a converted quarterback, the talented split in. Green, a quick fullback in front of Carl Trimble. Rick Ford getting his first start today. Second down and six for the Furman Paladins. Philly Jones will throw to Trimble. Smelled out Darius Dawson, outstanding defense. Gain of maybe two, that'll bring up third down. The Georgia Southern defense, the accent on quickness and depth. Alex Mash, the All-American getting his first start. He and Anthony Williams, two most active members of that front line. The linebackers, we just saw Darius Dawson. Paul Carroll, the spiritual leader. And there's Dexter Perkins, who played junior college ball nearby. Georgia Southern's defensive backs, an inexperienced group. All four first-time starters this year. First third down play of the ball game on the first series for the Paladins were just underway in Greenville. The fullback is Rod Green. Jones will keep and go nowhere. Well, Jeff, if that brings up fourth down, that brings on Ronnie McCutcheon, the freshman punter, 6'6", from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. He's had trouble, and this is an area we talked about because Georgia Southern excels at blocking punts. Well, that's one of the things they did last year. They had eight block punts last year. Furman's already had two this year. They've got one man back. It looks like a rush right now. Ronnie McCutcheon at his 10. Brandon Roselle, a junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, getting pressure and getting it off. And there's a flag as McCutcheon goes down. Roselle. Knocked down at the 35, but you can hear the Paladin faithful responding as Ronnie McCutcheon goes down at about the 15. That looked like Dominic Turner, an outside reserve linebacker in there just a little bit late running into the punter. They were trying to block it. On the defense. Our referee this afternoon, Steve Landis, giving the indication. Very disappointing for Tim Stowers and his crew. They make a big three down, three out stop on the first possession. Yeah, but they've applied pressure. Uh, Georgia Southern has applied some pressure these first three plays. If you look at Furman's offense, they tried to spread them out with a slot, putting two men to the wide side of the field a lot of times, Damon Bradley and, and uh, their other wide receiver. And instead of, instead of maybe the traditional option, we've seen a team trying to spread out Georgia Southern's defense, and uh, they weren't able to do much against it. Georgia Southern played defensively very well at first series. You can see Tim Stowers, the 34-year-old head coach of Georgia Southern, youngest head football coach in Division I football, expressing his displeasure. 
Well, Philly Jones, the sophomore from Winder Barrel High School in Winder, Georgia, comes out for his second first down. They get the break on the punt. Keep an eye on number 15, Damon Bradley, the receiver in the slot. Here's the give. Carl Tremble trying to cut back. No place to go. Outstanding pursuit by a fired up Georgia Southern defense. And there you see Anthony Williams, number 75, a junior college transfer from Valdosta, first on impact. You take a look at the defense of Georgia Southern. You see Anthony Williams and 97 Virgil Harrison getting their first starts. They do a good job of pushing the line back and keeping them off the backers, allowing Carroll to come free and outside to make that stop. Well, Jeff, there we saw number 42, Nick Davis, a junior from Griffin, Georgia, get in there. This is his first start of the day. Nick Davis and Alex Mash getting their first starts. They're the two best players. And there's Ronald Johnson smelling out the option and making the stop. Ronald Johnson, a senior, only 5'11", 191, from Hinesville, Georgia, played his ball at Bradwell Institute. He's a little guy, a runt, but he's got lots of fire, Jeff. You'll see him in the boundary a lot. They'll use the, the uh, sideline as part of their defense. Ron Johnson, I think the Georgia Southern coaches feel can play both things. He can play the pitch, and he can also play the quarterback with his outstanding quickness. Well, only one member of the Furman offense as we look at third down and long. Mark Tate, a tiny receiver, is larger then Johnson, a defensive end. Here's third down and 12. Jones looking for Tremble. Has the first down across the 40. Sean Austin in coverage, slip coverage, and after bobbling it, nice hands by Carl Tremble. They get a nice block by Ludwig, the right tackle on Alex Mash, the All-American, and Austin is gambling a little bit. He's underplaying him, and the ball is thrown high enough. A very nice reception by Tremble. So after the break on the roughing the punter, Philly Jones has the Paladins up near midfield. No score. It's early first quarter. Rod Green, the fullback. Maybe loses a yard. The Paladins use three fullbacks. Rod Green, a junior from Columbia. He has good speed, the better runner of the three. Then there's bruising Heath Brownstead, a 230-pounder, also a junior from Ironton, Ohio. And O.J. Davis, the junior, number 33, from Clarkston High School in Atlanta. Tim Stowers' defense now on second down and 10. Where Harrington and Williams both doing a lot to bottle up that inside. That trap play last time didn't work because of them. Damon Bradley in the slot. Mark Tate to the top of the screen. Tremble with Brew. Up to the 40. And into Eagle territory. Nice read by Philly Jones and a nice block on the corner. And up and hopping Anthony Williams. Big number 75 limping off the field. Jeff, let's take a look at that play. It's a reverse freeze option. He really takes a shot. Talking about Philly Jones from Alex Mash. He runs free, but look at Tremble run away from Nick Davis. Way too much speed once he gets in the secondary. That's one of the things Georgia Southern has tried to avoid. Jimmy Satterfield says that his big senior tailback, the two-time All-Southern Conference performer, has outstanding acceleration. Here's Rod Green up the middle. Another big hole. Inside the 30, a gain of eight for the fullback, Rod Green, a junior from Flora High School in Columbia, South Carolina. Boy, it's a sucker play on the backside. They really don't do anything to block anybody. Makes a nice cut because Virgil Harrington is coming inside between the left guard and the center, and he just makes a great cut back on a kind of an open hole. Second down and two, playing with house money. Billy Jones can gamble right here. Looking for his tight end. First down inside the 20. Big Tate Waters, 6'5", 245 pound senior from Wheeler High School in suburban Atlanta, Georgia, making the grab. Teams have really hurt Georgia Southern the first two games. Talking about FAMU, FAMU and Valdosta State by throwing the ball. They've averaged uh, about 300 yards a game. The nice completion, man-for-man -man coverage by Darius Dawson. First down at the 18, Furman trying to get on the board first. That's the fullback, Rob Green, inside the 10, and near another Paladin first down. 
Jeff, they're just chipping away and establishing the fullback in the heart of that Georgia Southern defense. They've done a good job of mixing it up well, I think, and the, the key probably was the big third down completion that they were able to get convert to Tremble. And once they get in the secondary, it, it looks like that maybe Georgia Southern doesn't have the speed. Ron Johnson is the guy who's had to make a couple of tackles from the far side. Well, here's the measurement. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the first period, and there is a first down and goal to go for the Furman Paladins. Paladins two and one on the year. What a pivotal game this would be today. Pivotal victory for either team. Jimmy Fat Satterfield calling the plays with his quarterback coach, Bobby Lamb, just to his left. Lamb the quarterback in the Paladins' first matchup against Georgia Southern back in 1985. Here's first down for Philly Jones, the sophomore quarterback. Looking for the option, Tremble, and Jones trapped in the backfield. Looks like Nick Davis, the 5'10", 208 pound outside linebacker and top returning tackler on the team gets there first. Let's see if Jones falls forward for maybe a yard. That's Brandon Roselle, the cornerback. They're going to his side. And he was in great position to cover the pitch man if they'd have thrown it to Carl Trimble that time. There was really nothing there for the option into the boundary. Good defensive play by Georgia Southern. Second down and seven, three split receivers along with the tight end, Scott Wild in there. Carl Trimble, the lone setback. And Philly Jones looks at the Georgia Southern oh, defense, oh, stares into the face, and he wants a timeout. We are just underway, well, seven and a half minutes like remaining in the like first period. Furman gets a break. They go three downs and out after taking the opening kick. There is a roughing the punter penalty. Paladins get the ball back, and now you see Jones conferring with Jimmy Satterfield. That's him in the glasses. And Bobby Lamb, the outstanding quarterback's coach, in the headset in the middle. Well, let's take a break here from Greenville, South Carolina. Paladins trying to get on the board first against Georgia Southern's defense. Scoreless with seven and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Furman Paladin sophomore quarterback Philly Jones right there, number 12, facing second down and goal to go from the seven. The Jones comes to the line with David Stamey, a senior, split down to the bottom of the screen, and the dangerous Damon ba Bradley up to the top. Heath Brownstead, the fullback, and that's Carl Tremble, the splendid senior in the eye. Brownstead, straight ahead. Pounding Brown down dead, inside the five, the maybe to the four, falling forward. They were trying to trap that time. It looked like John Hunsay, a left guard, trying to trap on Terrence Odom's six foot 278. Just not enough of a, of a hole created inside for the trap to work. It's got to be a very quick hitting play. Third down and three. Jones has Tremble, pitch is loose, Georgia Southern recovers. Ronald Johnson, the senior defensive end from Hinesville, and you can see Tommy Spangler fired up about that turnover that his defense recovers inside the 20. Well, this is all defense. They had it diagnosed very well. It's Nick Davis out there applying a lot of pressure on Philly Jones as he makes the pitch. And here comes Ron Johnson, Tracy Austin, the cornerback. They had three guys up there who would have been able to make the play. Charles Bostic, the sophomore, gives ahead to his junior fullback, James Williams, who pounds ahead for the Georgia Southern offense. Strong Thomasville, Georgia connection. Charles Bostic, a sophomore, had one poor game where he completed only five, or rather did not complete a pass. In the last game, five of six. Bostic also scored three touchdowns running in the last game. So it's Bostic, a sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia. His center, Rusty Parrish, a senior from Thomasville, as is his fullback, James Williams. And Bostic likes to throw. Second down. Going deep. Terrence Sorrell. Well thrown ball, but overthrown and out of bounds. That'll bring up third down. The Georgia Southern offensive line is a strength. They're a veteran group. Rex Nottage, an All-American, the strongest member of the club. Nottage, Rusty Parrish, and Miguel Ayub been starting now for three years. Behind them, Bostic, the sophomore. Terrence Sorrell and Darren Willis, two talented split ends. James Williams, the fullback. Steve Payne, and then Fleet, Shaft, and Fraley, the two slot backs. 
Third down and one. First offensive possession for Tim Stowers' offense. James Williams straight ahead. Does he get enough, Jeff? I think he might have. I think he might have fallen for it. It's all in the mark. A couple years from now, we'll all have lasers doing that on the sideline, and we won't have to worry about where the referee spots Jeff, it. the most inexact science in, <laughs> in all of sports is the spot, the placement of the ball. Patrick McGowan in there on defensive support for the purple shirts, the purple paladins of Furman. We have six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Tim Stowers taking a look. The change stretch. By a nose. What I say, First huh? down. Let's take a look at that Paladin defense. Ryan Livesey, top sack man in the Southern Conference. Clint Crocker, Mo Sterling, Milan Sterling. They call him Mo. He's a drop end, so he plays like a rover or a linebacker. Coda Suttle, maybe the best linebacker in the Southern Conference. And the two safeties, Coleman and Tillman, are outstanding. Jason Grant playing some today, but did not get the start. Here's Bostic squirting ahead on that triple option. It's called the flex bone. Jeff, it has properties of both the wishbone, the run and shoot passing attack, and the veer offense. And when, it, when Bostic is right, as he was a week ago, he really makes the big machine run. He makes it click. I think if you watch Furman, you'll watch their weak side. That is when, they're, when there's no tight end to that side, well, really they run into the boundary, the short side of the field. They'll try to pressure the fullback with that defensive lineman. Bostic trying to cut it up. The pitch, it's loose. Fumble. And it looks like Furman may have recovered, although the Paladin's not excited yet. Jeff, I think he made the decision late. Looks like, well, Georgia Southern recovers. It looks like just a poor decision right there. He had a hole, cuts it up, and pursuit is right there on top of Charles Bostic. This is the freeze option, and he's he's looking all the way at live scene. He's un, he's just unsure, Livesey, the, the fine All-American defensive end, just a little bit unsure of what to do with it, take it up or pitch it. Well, Ryan Livesey, a junior from Norcross, Georgia, will see a lot of Charles Bostic today. Straight drop. Bostic dancing, has room. He's gonna run. Up near first down yardage. Again, we may have to wait for the spot and the measurement. Clock on the move under four and a half minutes remaining first period. No score yet between Georgia Southern, the four-time national champ, and the Furman Paladins, which won a national championship in 88. Bostic already 27 carries, 101 yards this year, and three touchdowns all in the Eagles' last game against Valdosta State. Jimmy Satterfield, he handles the offense. Bobby Johnson, his defensive coordinator, handles the D. Well, that was very nice defensive coverage by Furman down the field. Robert Beavers eventually made the tackle, but he allowed Bostic to come to him. I mean, he, he didn't have anybody in his area. He had to come up and make that stop instead of breaking down 10 or 12 yards away. He could have prevented the first down if it is a first down. Second measurement comes up shy by that much. And on comes the Georgia Southern punt unit. Tim Stowers Club less than a yard shy of the first down. Bill Thatcher stands back there, 6-1, a junior from Statesboro, Georgia. And back to receive Andre Worrell. One of the best in the Southern Conference. A junior from Iva, South Carolina, 5'10", 170. Paul Carroll, the up back in Georgia Southern's punt formation. Thatcher standing at his 18. Not much of a rush. That's flat. Worrell, fair catch, kneels down at the 36. That's fair field position for the second possession. We'll see that from an offense again when we return to Greenville, South Carolina, here on Sports South. We're provided by the Courtyard by Marriott in Greenville. Always make the Courtyard by Marriott your first choice in hotel accommodations when visiting the Greenville area. For reservations, call 1-800-321-2211 and ask for the special Furman Paladin rate. First down, Rod Green, the Paladin fullback, slamming forward off the right side. Maybe a gain of two. Well, Paladin's taking over for their second offensive possession. 
We're under four minutes in the first quarter. No score between Furman and Georgia Southern. Billy Jones, the sophomore, expected to go all the way this afternoon at the controls of the multiple eye Furman offense. They use both the option and just the old fashioned eye with Carl Tremble, a splendid senior, in the tail. Here's Jones getting pressure from Alex Mash. Will look, Worrell, or rather Damon Bradley, the intended receiver. Good defensive pressure there by Alex Mash, the defensive end, Jeff. Well, he showed no ill effects of that uh, ankle that's been bothering him the first two weeks. Only saw a little bit of action last week. But maybe he wasn't, he, maybe he just wasn't able to plant right at the end there when Jones pulls up in order to get the sack. It's, uh, you look at him, you can't see the line play, but he makes a nice inside move to get away from Hunsinger and Sturgis over on the left side. Anthony Williams, uh, left tackle, number 75 for Georgia Southern, out of there right now. A key performer. He's on the sideline. We'll try to find out more about that in a minute. Here's third down and eight. Jones getting pressure again. Throws it away and goes down as he releases the ball. He had three sets of hands reaching for him. Looks like Alex Mash is there with pressure. Ronald Jones, the first one to get heat on Philly Jones of Furman. And out come the Paladins on three downs. Boy, Georgia Southern brought the outside that time. They brought Mash off the right side, Ron Johnson off the left side, and they're trying to block him, talking about Furman, pull that guard out. Tommy Jones to block out on Ron Johnson, and they really forced the pocket, collapsed it. The freshman, all six foot six inches of him, Ronnie McCutcheon standing at his own 25. Ten men up for the Georgia Southern punt unit. They're retreating for coverage. Brandon Roselle on the move at the 25, slips down, and it's touchdown near the 24-yard line. Georgia Southern's second offensive possession of the game coming up. Been trading punts so far. Late in the first quarter, there's no score. Hard-hitting football here on Sports South. Georgia Southern and Foreman scoreless late in the first period. The emphasis this afternoon on hitting and on quarterbacks. Charles Bostic coming to the line on first down from the 22. Going nowhere. Clint Crocker, outstanding, getting pressure across the line and bringing down Bostic. Well, you look at the defense of uh, Furman here, and this is Clint Crocker. He does a nice job. Georgia Southern's trying to block down with their All-American tackle, Rex Nottage, number 59. And Clint Crocker's got a little bit of an outside step. He's able to get across his face and get into the face of Charles Bostic. Crocker, a senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Second down, a loss of four. Bostic getting heat again. And the ball is loose, but Georgia Southern does recover. That'll bring up third down and long. We expect this afternoon, Jeff, to see the backup quarterback, Joe Dupree of Georgia Southern. Maybe earlier than expected because Bostic's having trouble early. Well, Mo we Sterling getting in there and getting a hand on the ball. Watch the patience of Mo Sterling on that play. He waits for Bostic instead of committing himself. He knows he's got outside force covered with the pitch man. He doesn't have to worry about him. He's just sitting there waiting on Bostic. Georgia Southern stymied so far. Only one first down. Bostic rolling. Plenty of time. Complete, but well shy of the first down. That's Terrence Sorrell in front of the Eagle bench near the 31-yard line. A lot of composure, though, by Charles Bostic as he rolls out there. Liv says after able to get off the block of Jimmy Williams, and yet Bostic pumps once, and that causes Liv say to pull up a little bit, able to get outside. Well, Tim Stowers sends his punt unit on there again. Bill Andre Thatcher, Warrell, the junior, standing inside his 20. Andre Worrell back for Furman at the 30. No pressure. Booming high, big hang time punt. Worrell fields it on a dangerous, dangerous reception, and he's down immediately at the 23, and he's feisty about it. <laughs> Henry Parrish or Danny Britt from Georgia Southern, either one of them might have caught that ball too. That's how close they were to him when he made that catch. Beautiful punt by Bill Thatcher. One for the third possession of the first half is Philly Jones. He did not start this season at quarterback. With more information on that on Hugh Swilling, let's go to the sideline and Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. Hugh Swilling gave his injured ankle a try during pregame warm-ups. It is still extremely sore, so Jimmy Satterfield has decided unless Philly Jones gets hurt, Swilling will not see any action today. Philly Jones 
This is Carl Trimble. Stutter starts, and he's downed at the 22-yard line. Maybe a gain of one. Alex Mash there without the helmet on. Boy, that's a nice play by uh, Nick Davis, first of all, forcing Philly Jones to make the pitch. And, and Alex Mash doesn't show any effects of that ankle injury as he's able to get out and get a pretty fast guy in Carl Trimble. And watch Virgil Harrington, if you saw him, inside guy all the way out to the sidelines. Great pursuit. Second down and 11 as we approach the end of the first quarter. Tremble straight ahead. Blasting across the 30. That brings up third down. And maybe two. Fortunate spot right there. This afternoon, Philly Jones filling in for Hugh Swilling because Swilling sprained his left ankle against University of North Carolina two Saturdays ago. He set out all of the following week and, and then last Saturday's game against Presbyterian College. Practiced some this week, but the Furman coaches say Philly Jones, heads up player, son of a coach, understands this offense, gets the nod today. And that's the end of the first period. Well, we'll swap ends the field. So far, it's been a defensive battle. Alex Mash and Nick Davis doing the job so far for Georgia Southern's defense. Back with the second quarter from Greenville here on Sports South. 99, Alex Mash, the junior All-American from Thomasville, Georgia, standing out so far in his first start of the year. Third down and two, first play of the second quarter. Philly Jones has Tremble. Nice cut. First down from Paladins. Well, Jeff, Georgia Southern's run defense, ranked number three in the nation, giving up but only an average of 38 rushing yards per game already this afternoon, giving up 54 in the first quarter, and in this, the first hitter of the second quarter. Well, it's a great third down conversion here by Furman. Philly Jones hangs onto the ball just to the last second. They get a great block. I think that was Scott Wilde, a backup tight end, blocking on uh, 14 for uh, Georgia Southern, able to spring him free. Mark Tate, the big senior tight end, to the tight side of the field. Jones to his fullback, O.J. Davis, busting through and into Georgia Southern Territory. Well, Alex Mash along the defensive front needing help. Anthony Williams has stood out in the first two games of the year, the big junior college transfer for Georgia Southern. But Williams right now is on the sideline. Let's take a look at O.J. Davis straight ahead. Just a little bit of a trap block. They get a very nice trap block on Michael Morris. Looks like John Hunsinger and Fred Sturgis. They're crisscross blocking in there. The left guard and left tackle. Michael Morris just into the game and gets trapped. Big hole up inside of it. Orinthian James Davis. Wasn't O.J. Simpson Orenthal? They copied that name from somebody. <laughs> At the 14-minute mark of the second quarter, still scoreless. Nice block by Damon Stamey. But Jones, good pursuit by the Georgia Southern defense. Stamey, the receiver, comes in to block down, but the Georgia Southern pursuit too quick to get out there. You look at that play ends, Phil. You see 11 Georgia Southern players standing over around the football. They didn't all make the tackle, but they're all over there hustling and pursuing. You see the replay here, great block. Number 66, Tommy Jones, the right guard, pulls out and cuts down Mo Morris once again. Rather, that was Alex Mash. Tremendous lunging effort. Paul Carroll, the middle linebacker, and Rob Stockton, the freshman from Clayton, Georgia. 5'11", 172, the safety. Second down and nine. Out to Tremble again on the corner. Out of bounds, shy of the first down. That'll bring up third down and short. Billy Jones at the uh, control of the option. That's, that's Carl Tremble, who is now just one touchdown shy of becoming the second of moving up to second on Furman's all-time list for touchdowns. He has 39. Robbie Gardner has 40. Stanford Jennings, who plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, has 43. As we said earlier, Trimble will rewrite the record books both here at Furman and in the Southern Conference for touchdowns, for yardage, and for scoring when it's all over. And Philly that, Jones coming to the sideline. Jeff, go ahead. That last pitch, that was the very first time today we've seen Philly Jones make 
the perfect decision. They've had a lot of trouble getting outside with their option today. There's been a couple of fumbles. But Georgia Southern's defense that well. Michael Morris and Darius Dawson came down that time, and they messed it up. Philly Jones' nice decision. Way through the first half, Furman quarterback Philly Jones for this first perhaps big play of this game on third down and three. He's only converted once so far. Jones getting pursuit and going down. Drop for a loss of two, Nick Davis, the linebacker, brings him down. And, and Jeff, that Georgia Southern defense keeps coming up with good pursuit and good penetration. They do a nice job here. Nick Davis scraping along the line. They're trying to get Scott Wild out and blocking him. Can't get the angle on him. Nick Davis goes after him and really nowhere to go. Rob Stockton there on the outside. It looked like it was uh, Brandon Roselle had the pitch man covered pretty well. Davis, a four-year starter for the powerhouse Griffin Bears in high school. In Georgia, there's Brandon Roselle standing at his 10. Ronnie McCutcheon, the freshman, at midfield. That's high off the left side of his foot. Freddie Punt, let's see if they can down it. It's tough to, tough to read that official's decision right there, Jeff. The, That's not the official doing the yelling, is it, down there? Well, that goes into the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 20. Not a definitive call, but we'll be back with more of the first half here on Sports South. The 1AA Championship. Now, the rubber match, igniting a newborn conference rivalry. Live today at 1 on Sports South. And a game between two big powerhouses, scoreless so far. Jeff, what would an atmosphere be like at a college campus be without a couple of bare shirts, bodies painted, <laughs> having a good time? Straight ahead, the fullback for Georgia Southern, busting free. That's Chad Holmes, a freshman from Griffin, Georgia. First play of the day for him. We have our first big injury of the day. Let's go down to Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. Uh, update on Anthony Williams, the talented defensive tackle for Georgia Southern. He has a slight ankle sprain. Will probably sit out the rest of the half, but should see action in the second half. Back to you. On the first down gain, here's Bostic. Cutting back. Charles Bostic breaking about 17 yards and up near midfield. Biggest play of the day this afternoon. Biggest gainer for the Eagles. They hadn't had much room rushing the football. Firm has done a good job of defending him this time. Beavers, though, commits himself across the field on the fake, and Charles Bostic does a nice job of avoiding people. He avoids Coda Suttle, and he's able to pick up some good yardage. Eagles hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Spotted at the 47. That's Shafton Fraley now. Back in the eye. Bostic dancing, but going down. Good, good pursuit, and look at... Clayton Gibson, number 42 back there, but he has company. A lot of company. Clint Crocker, Liv say he misses the tackle the first time. He's able to come back and make it the second time. That's what you talk about getting off the ground and not staying down on the ground. I think Charles just made a decision here. There were too many of them out there, too many purple shirts, and try to duck it back for something. Jeff, in a nutshell, that is Charles Bostic. Splendid play, then busted play. Chad Holmes, the fullback, hammers forward. Back near the original line of scrimmage. Tremendous pressure, Phil, on the young man after uh, filling some of the shoes of the great quarterback play they have had there. And he's a young guy. I mean, he and Dupree, when they came out of high school three years ago in the state of Georgia, the two top sought-after quarterbacks now both playing on the same team. Dupree doesn't have a grasp of the offense as Bostic does yet. Straight drop, Charles Bostic. Almost intercepted. Andre Worrell got a hand on it. That'll bring up fourth down, and that'll bring on the punter. Boy, you see great coverage by Mylon Sterling, Mo Sterling. They rush him, and here he is out covering a wide receiver out in the deep flat. Looks like the zone coverage there. They've got the safety coming across, and uh, rather Andre Worrell's coming across for Furman, and. There's no room to throw that ball. I think he's either throwing it away or knows he doesn't have a play there. Bill Thatcher from his 33. Ten men up on the line for Furman. 
We are scoreless early in the second quarter. Andre Worrell from and he puts a hand up fair catch this time inside the 20. You know the coach at Georgia Southern Tim Stowers has a unique line and perhaps perspective on Charles Bostic in the quarterbacking position. He says the coach at Georgia Southern only has to live up to one legend. The quarterback has to live up to two. Tracy Ham and Raymond Gross back in a good defensive scoreless game in Greenville. This game Furman taking over inside the 20. Carl Tremble trying to hammer forward. Gain of two on that right side. Tremble, the thing that they talk about him in the backfield here, Jeff, is his acceleration. So he doesn't have great speed, doesn't have great strength or great moves, but he has a good combination. And what makes it work is that he has good acceleration after that first and second step. He's up to full speed. That's the most important thing, I think. You don't have to be the fastest in the world if you can get up there very quick because everybody else is kind of moving from taking off themselves off a block or, or looking to see what's happening if they're a read defense. We are scoreless in Greenville. Billy Jones wants to throw it. Good defensive. Good defensive work by Georgia Southern. Sean Austin, the junior from Thomasville, Georgia. We keep naming that town. Mike Hodges, the offensive coordinator, the former high school coach at Thomasville. Let's take a look, Jeff. He's looking all the way to throw the ball. Looked like Sean Austin almost pulled Damon Bradley out or, or had a hold of his jersey over in the sideline or forced him out of bounds before that pass is off. And I think that Mo Sterling, or Ronald Johnson rather, jumping threw off Billy Jones a little bit in order to, he didn't get that ball out there early. Third down and eight. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Alex Bash inside handoff. Jason Ensley. Gain of maybe two. And there's Ronald Johnson on cue, the defensive end, making the stop for Georgia Southern. Interesting call coming up here, Jeff. Third down, or check that, fourth down. That'll bring on the punting unit. My mistake. A good defensive series and good stop by that Georgia Southern defense. They are quick. They have good depth. And there's Brandon Roselle standing back at the 45. Ronnie McCutcheon near his 10. Let's see if the Eagles can get pressure right here. Nope, the return is on. From a left boot. That's high and end over end. Roselle giving ground. And running into a handful of purple shirts shy of the 40 and there's a flag down near the 40 yard line. Did you see a late hit in there or yeah. a, a, a block behind? That's a late flag unless he's throwing a face mask uh, that we can't see from up here. That is a very, very late flag. Well, legal use of hands a push in the back by somebody. Another six or seven years, they'll be naming those guys on TV, you know. <laughs> the amateurs will be able to get away with uh, holding and clipping. <laughs> Spoken tr like a true <laughs> offensive lineman. Uh, you guys only got your name in the paper on TV. Illegal use of hands on the receiving team during the return. It'll be their ball first and ten. In situations like that. I, we got to tell this story about you meeting with Tim Stowers yesterday, going through the walkthrough. You want to know more information about this big game today, the rivalry, and, and what's Tim's first question to you? Well, he want to know who are some of the great offensive linemen <laughs> that I played with. And uh, <laughs> that's spoken like a true old line coach and a, and a man who knows where football really starts. Bostic on the pitch. Henry Parrish stood up at the line of scrimmage. Big hit. Looks like Worrell. Nope, check that. Taiwan Tillman, a sophomore from North Augusta, South Carolina. Putting a pad to him. Once again, though, it's Mylon Sterling, 49, playing off the right side, Mo Sterling. He plays the quarterback, Bostic, and he knows he's got outside help. Beavers is even out there, the inside linebacker. Georgia Southern is not getting the inside scrape blocking by their tackles in order to pick off that linebacker. Only 10 yards passing as we move inside eight minutes of the first half. Bostic. Again, good pressure by the Furman Paladin defense. Craig Campbell, the nose man, a senior from Cartersville, Georgia, in there on the stop. That'll bring up third down and eight for Georgia Southern. Well, this time it's Livesey. He kind of hangs there. Furman's got two great guys to be able to play the option in Livesey and Sterling. They've got the ability to, to, to play both the quarterback and the pitch man because they have the quickness and, and they played this defense. They see it almost every day in practice, the option. Furman Paladin fans 
Letting their voices be heard on third down and long. Fumble, and Furman may have recovered. Chris Wright on the inside pass bobbled the pigskin. As they unstack, let's see if that's Livesey in there. I think it was Livesey caused the fumble and also might have fallen on it if, he, if, if Furman's able to recover. That's called an incomplete pass. That's the old Utah pass. Let's take a look at it from the lower level, Jeff. Originated at Utah State. That's why they used to call it the Utah shuffle pass. At least that's my understanding of it. And this is the same play that Furman tried to run. Makes a nice execution. But look at Livesey. He never puts the ball in his hands. Talking about Georgia Southern's running back, Chris Wright. Wright, a sophomore out of Lowndes High School in Valdosta. Then hampered by a five pull. Pressure. And he goes, no flag though, rather. The fair catch, Georgia Southern right up in the face of Andre Worrell. Georgia Southern, the defense back on the field. Furman, an outstanding field position, taking over at the 36 yard line. Phil, both teams running the option as their main office, offenses, both defenses. You know, they just see this all the time. They know how to play the option. I don't care if you call it the flex bone or what. Kicking game here, they've got to do something. Somebody's got to make a big play to bust this 0-0 tie. Billy Jones, the sophomore quarterback, getting only his third start for the Paladins. Tate in and out of his hands, and Paul Carroll may have got a hand on it. Let's go down to Jim Noble on the sideline. Jim? Thanks, Phil. I've got here the latest promotional uh, thing that the Furman Sports Information Department is doing. It features tailback Carl Tremble. The poster reads, Tremble with Fear. And let me tell you, this poster has been hanging in the Georgia Southern locker room all day, all week long. And let me assure you, Mr. Tremble's face has been altered somewhat by the budding artist and residents at the Georgia Southern lineup. Back to you. <laughs> Some art majors on the Georgia <laughs> Southern defense. Ball spotted at the 37. Tremble straight ahead, and there's Alex Mash to greet him behind the line of scrimmage. Nick Davis in there soon also. I can't say enough already about Alex Mash in the first half of his first start so far this year, Jeff. Well, he's been all over the field today, and uh, this is one of the toughest things you ask an offensive lineman to do, to draw a block, especially against what may be the best player on the team. On the field, for that instance, as both coaches have said, and that's Alex Mash, 99. He's able to shake the blocker and get in and make the stop. Third down. Jones, and there's Ronald Johnson, and Philly Jones goes down. Ronald Johnson beating the block and getting the sack. What a huge loss for the Paladins. Nice pull by move by Ron Johnson. He's working against Sturgis, the, uh, the senior left tackle of Furman. He just pulls him by. Right hand pulls over his shoulder. Left arm swims over the top of him. Great quickness by Ron Johnson. Hey, Carly! Outstanding technique. And as we approach the five and a half minute mark of this scoreless first half, Ronnie McCutcheon. From about the 13, the freshman Furman punter. Henry Parrish almost got a hand on it. Brandon Roselle at the 40 wants to return. Gets one block. And then he is chased down. Good pursuit by Clayton Gibson, the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. 223 pound linebacker for Furman University. Well, here's perhaps the, by far, the best field position for the Georgia Southern offense today. Still out there for the fourth possession. That's Charles Bostic. Jeff, we do expect to see Joe Dupree sometime today, the transfer from the University of Georgia. But here's Bostic with his offense quickly up to the line. The ball spotted at the 47. Straight ahead trying to establish the fullback. Nothing doing. Well, there's one thing about this offense, too, the option offense. It can struggle and struggle and not do anything, not any positive plays, and all of a sudden you hit the big one, the big play that somebody comes up to make and a guy misses a tackle, he could go all the distance. It is a big play offense in that respect. Everybody thinks of it maybe a little nickel and diamond, three or four yards here, but you can play till you get the big play. Boston has time, and a receiver, Steve Payne, had 
two steps on safety Jeff Coleman, the senior from Southwest DeKalb High School in Atlanta. Coleman was whipped, boy did he bite on that fake up the middle. But Bostic, a pretty spiral, just overthrows. Well, he's the hardest hitter in the secondary, Jeff Coleman. He does take a short look inside. He's not sure what's going on, and Payne's just running a fly route. If the ball's delivered, and it's way overthrown, uh, Charles Bostic just, just misses a touchdown there. Let's credit offensive coordinator Mike Hodges with a nice call on second and long, but here's third down. We are scoreless at Furman. Bostic straight ahead. That's across midfield, but that is shy, well shy of the first down. Clock on the move under four and a half minutes remaining. Tim Stowers' team right now winning the battle of field position. Back at the first drive of the game for Furman. Paladins got down, knocking on the door, but then coughed up the ball. Georgia Southern recovered it at the 18, but since then, Jeff, we've gone back and forth, and we've saw we've been uh, getting a clinic on punting. <laughs> there have been some shots there. They've had some opportunities, and sometimes it, they've turned the ball over when you feel like maybe they could have gotten something going after a first down. Worrell with the hand up. Henry Parrish and Marco Bradham down in coverage for Georgia Southern. The Paladins will take over at the 18. A lot of three downs and out. Jeff, let's talk about the first two meetings between these teams, both for national championships. Back in 1985, they went out to the Tacoma Dome in Washington. Did you, did you get a chance to see that game? Oh, yeah. What an amazing uh, football game. And in the next year, or rather three years later, 1988, one's all offense, one's all defense. Georgia Southern wins the first one, Furman the second one. This afternoon, all defense again. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. Philly Jones keeps it. Straight ahead, smart maneuver on Alex Mash. The one thing I'll remember about that first game out in Tacoma, Dick Sheridan, the head coach of Furman, very superstitious. Sheridan now at North Carolina State. To make sure that they had the exact pregame ritual, he had grits <laughs> specially delivered to the hotel they were staying so that they would have grits for breakfast all that way from one end of the continent to the other. Couldn't find him in Tacoma? <laughs> Second down and four. Jones has Worrell. Damon Bradley with the reception, his first of the game, up near the 45-yard line. First down for Furman. His 15th catch of the year. Well, here you see Bradley. He finds the zone. On the short end, we've got uh, Brandon Roselle, the safety Don Hudson. A little bit late getting over there. That's a very nice pass. Nice delivery over Brandon Roselle to get in the ball. Bradley, a junior from North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a converted quarterback. He's in the slot to the top of the screen. Jones to his fullback. No, good ball work, good ball handling, and outstanding timing by Philly Jones, holding to the last second with his fullback and then making the pitch to Carl Tremble. Your quarterback's got to be very durable in this type of offense. They're going to take a lot of shots, and... The big key on that play is Damon Bradley on the outside wide receiver. He's able to put a block on Rob Stockton, the safety, and able to cut up inside of him, Carl Tremble. But you're going to get a lot of hits, and he really takes a good blow there. He takes a lick from Sean Harrelson, the 6'3 senior from, from Maryland. Clock under 240 in the first half. We are scoreless. Carl Tremble stops. He eludes one tackler. Shakes Terrence Odoms, but Odoms has friends. I feel right before that ball is snapped. Sean Harrelson, he's playing more inside over the guard. He moved out. He just kind of, he shuffled his, uh, his feet. You're here, here we're seeing Alex Mash on the back side, and, and really this isn't a play that Alex Mash should make. It's the front side that uh, is that Virgil Harrington getting a lot of penetration and Sean Harrison, uh, his moving out really threw the blocking scheme off for Furman. Big play for the Georgia Southern defense right there. Brings up third down and long. Jones has time. And finds Adric Harrison, a freshman from Thomasville Central High School. He's out of bounds, but it doesn't look like Harrison gets first down yardage, Jeff, where it looked like he could have done that. You did say a freshman from Central. <laughs> I mean, that might be a the mistake freshman. there. If they don't get the first down, he's got the sticks easy. All he has to do is make the step in front of the sticks. 
He's running the square out. Enough for the first down. He's just got to make the right steps. It looks like they have it marked, though, for first down. You notice that Furman uh, today, when they've done the drop back passing, they've been successful, much like FAMU and, and uh, Valdosta State were able to throw the ball on a very fine Southern defense. Southern defense geared up more for a running team, more to stop the run, I think, than, than able to stop the pass unless they get the early pressure. Well, there you see Sean Austin, number 18, and Darius Dawson, number five, and you can see it is just inches, just inches shy of the first down. Minute 50 left in the game and uh, it, in the first half. It looks like Jimmy Satterfield is going to go for it. He's got great protection on his drop back. It looks like they're leaving in uh, at least six guys, five linemen and somebody else. But uh, he had time. That's a freshman mistake, a young man's mistake, inexperience in the, in the college game just yet to be able to get the sticks. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, from our spot, or rather from our replay, it looks like the spot was a fortunate one in this instance to be just inches away on fourth down and inches. Split down to the bottom of the screen. Damon Bradley, Furman hustles up. And Heath Brownstead pounds through for the first down as the Paladins convert. That's one of the things that Tommy Spangler, the Georgia Southern defensive coordinator, talked about is how Furman will occasionally sprint the play in, hustle up to the line. First sound, they're going to run the play. Well, they catch the Georgia Southern defense milling a little bit, too. Look at them run up there and get set. That, that requires a lot of discipline. Everybody set their linemen very quickly. And Georgia Southern unprepared for it. Heath Brownstead, the big fullback from Ironton, Ohio. Philly Jones releases all of them. Tate across the middle. Gain of nine, maybe ten. Paul Carroll, the middle linebacker from Georgia Southern, makes the grab. And here's Furman playing hurry up with under a minute and a half remaining in this scoreless first half. Jones going to work at the line of scrimmage. Brownstead again, hammering forward, does get the first down, gain of four. Let's keep an eye on Damon Bradley, number 15, the split in. He's a big playmaker to the top of the screen. And that's Jimmy Satterfield motioning into Philly Jones. Yeah, Furman's only got one timeout left. They're trying to really hurry their offense up. They get a little break here with a clock stoppage on the first down. And a lot of this is predetermined. A lot of these plays are probably predetermined in a two-minute offense or a check-with-me offense. Furman trying to be the first club to get on the board in this hard-hitting first half. Tremble in the eye behind Brownstead. Jones has Bradley spit to the top of the screen and Mark Tate to the bottom. Flat pitch, and Carl Trimble just runs out of room. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Paul Carroll, an emotional middle linebacker over there to usher him out. And that is in the area that all offensive linemen fear. That looked like it came from the umpire. And it's going to be against Furman. And holding. Uh, I would venture to guess that it is holding on one of the offensive linemen inside. And they really didn't need to. Nobody, you know, nobody's going to make that play in the outside option. A lot of times you don't know that. You don't know it's not going to be the fullback right behind you. Your man going to make the tackle. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty, still first down. Execution is a word that the Paladins use often and in one that they take a, a great deal of pride on both offense and defense. They try to not beat themselves with penalties like this that takes them well out of field goal range as we sit right now with 51 seconds remaining in the first half. I'll tell you a little bit about execution. Uh, uh, John McKay used to say about his execution at Tampa Bay. <laughs> when asked about it, he said, yeah, I think we ought to execute every last one of them plays for that offense. That's about how they played. Execution is a term that they bandy about in football a lot. And, it, and when you're, it's going right for you, when you're executing right, it looks fantastic. Well, there's Ben Snyder, 5'10", sophomore kicker from here in nearby Travelers Rest, South Carolina. Two of three so far this year, but he's missed on three of nine PATs. He's had a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Again, the clock at 51 seconds. The PAT is automatic, isn't it? <laughs> Thank goodness it's not. I have a little excitement into that. I think that two-point conversion when they put that in college football, I think that really adds to it. I mean, it's a, it's a decision that the coaches have to make, and, and it's a decision you don't have a lot of time to think about either. Again, 51 seconds remaining in this scoreless first half. O.J. 
J. Davis, big boot. A gain of 23 on the draw play. And the Paladins are knocking on the door once again. You gotta be a little bit of a Sarah Bernhardt, a little bit of acting when you run the draw blocking. John Hunsinger does a great job on McGowan there. Check that, Carl Tremble on the big gain. Spot that ball at the 18. Again, the pitch to Tremble. Tries to turn the corner, but the middle linebacker, number 43, Paul Carroll, gets first contact as Tremble dances out of bounds. Clock dead at 32 seconds remaining in the first half. Tremble scored four touchdowns this year, 39 in his career. Came into this game the number eight, ranked number eight in the nation in rushing, averaging 130 yards a game. And he has to be the focus right now for Coach Tim Stower's defense. That's Tremble in the eye with a pair of tight ends. Jones. Complete. He dropped it wide, open in the end zone. Oh man, you need glasses. <laughs> Henry Parrish. Check that. I mean, Mark sorry. Tate, the freshman from Wheeler High School in Marietta. I don't think he thought he was going to get the ball. I think it was. In, he thought it was intended for Tate Waters. And if you look at Rob Stockton, the safety, and he gets a little, little pressure. Look at Rob Stockton. The safety comes up to play Tate Waters, and there he is, Tate sitting right in the end zone, wide open for a touchdown. But I believe that ball was going to the big tight end, the six foot five guy. Stockton and Brozell in the defensive backfield bid on it. Third down and eight. Tremble the long setback. Dancing near the 10, but shy of the first down. Well shy. When Nick Davis had a shot him in the backfield, looks like he hurt his ankle again. He's He's out there in pain on the field, but he had a shot at Tremble in the backfield. Clock at the 10, at nine, and Furman. That's Nick Davis down to the right side of your screen at the 20-yard line. And a timeout, the final one taken by the Furman Paladins. Furman's been running that draw play, very effective to Carl Tremble this first half. A lead draw, it's a little bit of a delay, and I think that's been their most success with Tremble. They haven't hurt Georgia Southern too much getting Trimble outside on the option. Davis being helped up, the top returning tackler on the team, missed a start in the first two games with that tender right ankle, but it looks like he's favoring the left one right now. Nick Davis, one of only two returning starters from a year ago for the Georgia Southern defense, and he's headed to the locker room early here. Here you see him. Boy, they're getting a great block out of Hunsinger on McGowan, getting a lot of movement, but he's flying through the air. He's got a shot at Tremble in the backfield. Yep. That's two, two good blocks in a row that Hunsinger has had on McGowan, really getting Take into that him. Vincent Norris, Jeff, to correct that. Vincent Norris, the freshman for Georgia Southern, getting blocked out of there. Well, here's the left footer, Ben Snyder. And Georgia Southern will now call a timeout with nine seconds remaining. It's been a physical first half. Not a lot of offense. The Paladins have put together the two most impressive drives. One to open the first quarter. That was aided by a roughing the punter call. Got down inside the 10. The Paladins fumbled. Georgia Southern took over. And now the Eagle defense being called on one more time. I think both those drives feel characterized by being able to throw the football, too. I was talking to Billy Jones's dad before the game. He told me this summer he threw a hundred passes a day seven days a week to work on his throw that's Phil Jones the high school coach at Winder Barrow High School in Georgia very well respected Philly after an outstanding prep career at Winder Barrow played in the Georgia Florida High School All-Star game a week ago against Presbyterian College his first nine passes 11 for 17 on the day but he's had trouble here today against this very active Georgia Southern defense all right, Paladin's trying to get on the board. Snyder, two of two from inside the 30. Brian Wade, the holder. And again, Georgia Southern burns their final time, or rather, burns another timeout. <laughs> They're trying to ice Snyder, who has had some troubles, we have pointed out. 
Well, those timeouts don't do you any good in the locker room at halftime. Why not? Yeah, well, go ahead and use them. Let them think about this a little bit. And, uh, you know, this is a little bit of gamemanship here. We have no score so far. We're going to try to add a halftime today to speak with both coaches. Other halftime features coming up. We'll take a look back at the championships of Georgia Southern. Eagles have four national titles. Paladins have won. Last year, the first time that neither school had been invited to the 1AA playoffs. So this is a bounce back game, a bounce back year for both. And today, a pivotal, pivotal game for the two top powerhouses in 1AA football. Well, Jimmy Satterfield, a lot of success here at Furman. Furman under Dick Sheridan, Art Baker, Jimmy Satterfield, they've all had a lot of success in 1AA. And Tim Stowers, he called 7-4 last year, mediocre. Well, they had one more timeout to use. <laughs> Judicious use of your timeouts, like a basketball game, isn't it? And I think the weather has now changed in the last five minutes. <laughs> well, Adolph Rupp would have been proud of the way Jim, that Tim Stowers used his timeouts here. <laughs> Held them to right before the half. Well, you know, you're right. Tim Stowers made no bones about it. He says 7-4 at Georgia Southern is mediocre. And they were just a play or two away from making the playoffs. Well, that's what they've built there. They built that program since 82, Irk Russell, and now Tim Stowers and, and uh, those fine players and coaches. As here, they've got a tradition started there that means something to them. Let's quickly go down to Jim Noble on the sideline. Thanks, Phil. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a preview of the last two, time, last two times these two teams met in 1988. That is, of course, unless Georgia Southern has a, a couple more timeouts up their sleeve. They've burned the ball, and here's Snyder. First field goal attempt of the after afternoon. Nine seconds remaining in the first half. Blocked by Georgia Southern. And the Eagles recover, doesn't matter. Well, the fine special teams play of Georgia Southern shining through. Is there a flag down? I thought I saw some yellow hit the dirt. No, no flag, but you saw Furman overload the left side. They put two up backs on the left side, and they leave the right side unguarded. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody, no up back on the right side. And coming off the corner, they're able to make a nice block. I can't tell if that was uh, Alex Mash got to it before Henry Parrish. One of those two guys got to it. The Eagles had eight blocks a year ago, and that's all Charles Bostic had to do. The, the Eagles had eight blocks a year ago. That tied a 1AA record. Outstanding special teams play. Tim Stower is going to have a word with Steve Landis, the referee, about this first half. We are scoreless after two quarters of play. Jim Noble working the sidelines. We'll have a word with Jim Noble and Tim Stowers. Take it away, Jim. Thanks, Phil. What a way for your defense to end a great first half, huh? Defense is playing good. They're bending but not breaking. We've only got two first downs in the first half. Of course, they have some experienced players on defense. They have some super football players that have been able to move the ball. We've got to move the football and get better field position in the second half. Final question. Will we see Joe Dupree to start the second half at quarterback? No, not right now. We'll go We'll go with Charles. We just see Joe before the game's out. We've only had the ball about 20 plays. All right. Thanks. Coach Sowers, get on in there. Phil, the us in the back upstairs. No score at halftime. Well, Jeff's spoken like a coach. He goes right away to a couple of stats. Only two first downs. Jeff Van Oden and I will be back to talk more about this first half, but let's take this break. It's half season in Division I AA football for Georgia Southern and Furman. Ironically, they've only met twice, both times with a national championship at stake. In 1985, Georgia Southern was the new kid on the block, and in only their second year of 1AA competition, the Eagles shocked a mighty Furman team in the title game. Led back from a 22-point deficit by quarterback Tracy Ham, Southern topped Furman 44-42 for their first national championship. Furman had a great tradition and a, a more established and older program. Hey, we had a chance to win the football game, and Tracy made the, made the throw, and Frankie made the catch, and the rest is basically history. But just three years later, in 1988, the sweetest form of revenge came the Paladins' way. Furman shut down Southern's vaunted flexbone offense and blunted the Eagles' final gasp with a fumble recovery inside the five. The 17-12 win gave the Purple Gang its first national title. 
And although the Furman folks felt that things were now square, the current Eagles still feel the sting of that defeat. Three yards shy in 1988. Yeah, I can put my finger on that. I, I never forget that. And we just, we don't want to be three yards short this year. It's kind of like, um, you know, watching the Georgia-Florida game on television, you know, growing up and then having a chance to play in it. And so uh, I think this is the same type situation. Well, of course, Georgia Southern bounced back from that defeat in 1988 to win national championships in 1989 and 1990. So the national championship scoreboard reads Eagles 4, Paladins 1. But right now, present day, halftime here at Paladin Stadium, no score between Georgia Southern and Furman. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after this break. game scoreless one between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Furman Paladins the highlights of the first half Furman's outstanding senior tailback Carl Trimble best running back in the Southern Conference the past two years Jeff he rips one off here 14 carries 82 yards in the first half and this is the best of the bunch well it's a lead draw up the middle and this is one of the best plays he runs you think of him outside as a pitch man but he gets a great block out of Hunsinger on Vincent Harris and here you look at the field goal Kind of an unusual alignment. They want to protect the left-footed kicker, so they double wing the other side. No wing back on the right side, and that's Parrish and certainly Alex Mash. Great penetration against Rex Nottage, the All-American tackle. All right, let's go down to Jim Noble standing by with Jim Satterfield. All right, thank you, Phil. Coach, you predicted it yesterday. You told us a low-scoring game. It doesn't get much lower than 0-0. Well, anytime you have great defenses and people playing as hard as they can, uh, defense, both defenses are playing great, and uh, both teams are playing great. Unfortunately, neither one of us can get in the end zone. Seems that you could move the ball a little better than Georgia Southern. You, are you happy with your offense? Do you expect them to finally pop it in here well, in the second Well, we like half? to get points on the board. We have moved the ball, get down around the 20, we'll make a mistake, and I think it's the reason that they're doing a good job playing defense down there. All right, thanks for joining us. Good Thank luck you. in the second half. That's Jimmy Satters Satterfield, and both he and Tim Stowers told us it will be a low-scoring game, and they were very right, Phil. Just frustrating for Satterfield and his coaches that they've been knocking on the door twice, once early in the first quarter, once late in the second quarter, when able to get points. And let's take a look at the stats. One thing that stands out, I want to just go, right, Jeff, right to the bottom of the screen. Time of possession, Furman, twice the time of possession so far. That's accomplished two things. That's, that has not allowed Georgia Southern any kind of offense whatsoever today because it just kept them off the field. Well, you play hide with peekaboo, hide, hide the ball all day <laughs> along with it. At the same time, you have a tendency to wear down Georgia Southern's defense because they're on the field for the whole, for the whole day. And uh, the big thing, 118 yards rushing, I'm sure that uh, the defensive staff of Georgia Southern have pointed that out. But look at from Furman's standpoint. Twice was inside the 20, twice, twice in the scoring zone, they come away empty-handed. That's a big stat for Georgia Southern's defense. And that one turnover you see right there for Furman, the reason that on their first possession, down inside the 10, a fumble by the quarterback, Ronald Johnson, recovers for Coach Tim Stowers' team. Georgia Southern recovered, blunting that initial surge by Furman. Well, we're set for the third quarter. Paladins will kick it off. Ben Snyder, a sophomore from Travelers Rest, South Carolina, just a pretty good leg boot outside Paladin Stadium here. Standing back deep for Georgia Southern. Chris Wright, he can be spectacular, averaging about 25 yards a return. And look at there, number four, Joe Dupree, the transfer from the University of Georgia, heating up on the sideline. We expect to see him here in the second half. The question is whether we will see him here on the first possession. Snyder ready to boot it away, and Chris Wright standing just shy of his own goal line. Wright at the five. Squirts through on his feet at the 30. It's a foot race to 50 midfield. Chris Wright. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Chris Wright from end zone to end zone. Touchdown by number 21, Chris Wright. 94 yards. Georgia Southern special teams excel on the last play of the first half, last significant play, and on the very first play of the second half. The two most key times of a game, too, before you're going in halftime and when you're coming out in the third quarter. And people sometimes forget that this game is more than offense and defense. Special teams play such an important part they have for Georgia Southern today. Reed Haley, to Reed Haley from Bill Thatcher's hold. 
and it's good. And in thrilling fashion, my goodness, let's take a look at the first kick return for a touchdown for the Eagles since 1983. One Furman player's got a shot at him flying through the air there. I, I, I did not catch his number. And then he does a nice job of juking all the way up the field. I, I didn't see who that was. We had the only shot at him right back, right after he received the ball. But he does a nice job of taking it right up the numbers. That return even more remarkable when you consider that Chris Wright has had trouble throughout the week with a pulled thigh. Has not practiced at full strength. Well, of the slot backs, they say he's their most talented player. He can do the blocking. He's also a good runner. And we saw that running ability there as well as a good receiver. And that's what a slot back has to play in that Georgia Southern offense. Well, one of our three keys to the game this afternoon for Georgia Southern, many happy returns. Yay, yay, when something <laughs> works, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now flip it around second play of the first half this crowd still buzzing from that scintillating return by Chris Wright it's not a happy buzz though Phil I mean it's uh, you know they, they've been in a slugfest here the first half and come away with nothing and now a kickoff return can do a lot to take it out of the opposing team. It's just like driving a stake sometimes. If you're ahead, it can knock you out. If the game's close like it is now, we'll have to see how Furman reacts. Reed Haley, a sophomore from Clearwater, Florida, will kick it off. Sails toward Mark Date, who takes it at the 7. First contact to the 20. Stumbling forward up near the 24-yard line. A return of about 15 for Mark Tate. Boy, what an electrifying start to the second half. After two quarters of slug it out football, Georgia Southern special teams put a touchdown up on the board. And Philly Jones, after 7 of 12 in the first half for 70 yards, steps up to the line. The fullback. Rod Green springing free. Near the first down. Rod Green, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina. There's the inside trap. Tommy Jones, the right guard, comes over. They let the linebacker, the middle linebacker, 42, Nick Davis, go free. They trap him, plays up the middle. Green breaking free for a 65-yard touchdown earlier in the year against Liberty. Has five carries for 32 yards this afternoon. We are just underway in the third quarter. Furman trailing Georgia Southern by a touchdown. Billy Jones to his tight end. Tipped and almost picked off. Rob Stockton had it in his hands. Boy, he's wide open, wide open across the middle. And we haven't seen Philly Jones throw many balls, seven out of 12 in the first half. This ball, though, is a little bit high. He's got everybody held in. The safeties have dropping deep. The linebackers are sucking in. They're coming up on it. Look at all the hands get a hand on this ball. A tip drill every day in practice, they do this. There's Tate Waters, touches it three times. Rob Stockton gets a shot. Stockton, a freshman from Rabin County High School in Georgia, nearly had it at midfield. Second down and 10. Carl Tremble, cutting back. Might have lost a yard. Outstanding defense along the front by Georgia Southern. Real fine play by their, their fine defensive tackle, Anthony Williams. He pushes Tommy Jones back. Tommy Jones can't afford to give up too much room, but in doing so, there's no place for Carl Tremble to make a cut. Note, I've got to sting you with this one. Tommy Jones, the sophomore from Snellville, Georgia. His mother, Linda, was an Atlanta Falcon cheerleader from 1967 to 70, and her son is right out there <laughs> blocking for Carl Tremble. Well, let me say, let me give a cheer for Tommy Jones a little <laughs> bit there. Jones, deep drop, has his man, batted down. Nice play by Don Hudson, the safety from Warner Robins, Georgia. It looked like Damon Bradley even had that ball for a second. Bradley He's, had it in both hands. He's got great protection. Nice job by Ludwig on the outside, maybe getting away with a little bit of hands. But there's Damon Bradley. He should have that catch, and here comes Hudson in. Excellent play by both players. Brandon Roselle retreating to his 30. Ronnie McCutcheon, the freshman from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, at the 20. No pressure. 
Big boot. Ro Roselle retreating at the 22. Spinning, but no place to go. So the Eagle offense, let's see if Joe Dupree will set up camp. Ball spotted at the 23. There's Charles Bostick, number seven, who the, was the original starter this afternoon for Georgia Southern, coming out in the first half. Bostick, 10 of 12 running, one of five passing in the first half. We'll have more from Greenville with the Eagles on top. To Georgia Southern, now in his third year, Tim Stowers has emphasized special teams play, and that's how the Eagles put that touchdown on the board. First play from the line of scrimmage, that's James Williams, the fullback, pounding forward. And with more on Georgia Southern special teams, let's go down to the sideline and Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. That's only the second time a Georgia Southern player has ever returned a kickoff or a touchdown. The first one came back in 1983 when the Eagles were still a club program. Melvin Bell returned one against Valdosta State. Chris Wrights is touchdown number two. Melvin Bell streaking 96 yards. This afternoon, Chris Wright going 94. Charles Bostic loses the handle but quickly regains it. He had some territory, a nice cut, but couldn't keep his feet. Yeah, just looking at the, the defensive alignment of Furman that time, they, they look very spread out. They're playing their linebackers very deep, but maybe Georgia Southern's made a little bit of adjustment in their offensive line, and maybe they've, they've enlarged their splits a little bit, but there was a lot of room between the nose guard, Chris Turner, and the two guys either side of him, Clint Crocker and, and Patrick McGowan. Only one of five in passing, but here's third down and one. Bostic rolling. Tucking it in, lunging and reaching forward with the ball. Let's see that spot. That just might be enough. Bostic comes from Thomasville, Georgia, sort of a cradle of quarterbacks in the Southeast. Sean Jones, the quarterback at Georgia Tech, played at Thomasville. Charlie Ward, the quarterback at Florida State, also played at Central of Thomasville. Does a nice job talking about Liv Say fighting off the blocks of Payne and Williams, the fullback, and still getting in to make the tackle. Unable to make the stop before he gets the first, though. Lunging forward to get that first down. The fullback straight ahead. Looks like James Williams. And now they're establishing that fullback, something they had all intention of doing in the first half of play. Gain of five, James Williams. A lot of times you can create the hole with alignment, how far your linemen are spread apart, your center and your guard, your guard and your tackle. They don't like to leave them too far out there, but it looks like a big split between the right tackle, Nottage, and Franklin Stevens, the right guard in the center, Parrott. Bostic down on his wallet. That's Patrick McGowan, six foot three inch, 250 pound junior from Burkmar High School in suburban Atlanta. And the way you defeat it is you you slant your guys in. You have them take the gap. And this time it's Clint Crocker really coming down hard off that, that wing, ignoring the split, and really coming down the line. Take the gap if it's given to you. You don't have to worry about the man in front of you. Talked about those quarterbacks in Thomasville. Those folks would really be upset if we did not mention Mike Bobo, who plays now at what's Thomas County Central High School. It's a big time recruit in the state of Georgia. Bostic dancing out of bounds up near the 43. That's going to be shy of the first down, but he puts the straight arm out. You know, I thought right at the end, too, as Bostic's going out of bounds, it looked like he knew he needed to get up a little further for that first down and even extended the ball out of his right arm a little bit. Heads up play. The spot, very important right here. It's going to be shy because... Once again, Mo Sterling in on that tackle, a hard man to get around. Sterling considered by the Furman coaches and by the Georgia Southern coaches who have seen him on film, the best athlete on the Furman defense. Well, here's Bill Thatcher again, standing at the 31. Not much pressure, wobbly boot. Right over there by Marco Bradham, the freshman of Georgia Southern. Taiwan Tillman blocking him towards the ball. That was a dangerous play. But Thatcher gets a fortunate hop. That ball down inside the 15. We'll return to Greenville, South Carolina, here on Sports South. Georgia Southern on top of the Paladins by a touchdown. 
Chris Wright burned up about 94 yards of turf. The opening kick of the second half. The only scoring this afternoon. The Paladins take over, giving the ball to their bread and butter, Carl Tremble, putting back and cut down. A loss of six. Dominic Turner, a junior from Macon, and Huey Hunt, a sophomore from Hinesville, in there getting tremendous penetration. Here Heath Brownstead, unable to make the block. He's got to get the block on, on is that Dominic Turner, 48. He's unable to, to cut him off or push him out inside. Good job by the young guy, Dominic Turner. And on second down, backed up inside the 10, the Paladins are. There's Heath Brownstead hammering forward. And the linebacker, Scott Davis, a sophomore, seeing some of his first action. The third string linebacker, some of that depth of Georgia Southern in evidence is Scott Davis, the sophomore from Powder Springs, Georgia. Big powerhouse there, McEachern High School, gets his first action. He played it well, too. Uh, Hunsinger, the left guard, trying to trap him. That's one of the unusual nuances of this option offense of Furman. They pull their guards to try to trap a lot. They look for a scheme and angles to try to help their smaller linemen. And, and when it works, it looks great. That time, he's unable to get the block on Davis. Under nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Inside pitch. Billy Whitley. A gain of about three for Billy Whitley. Standing up and about two more on his knees. <laughs> Again, Scott Davis makes the play. Billy Whitley right there. The younger brother of Kevin Whitley, a four-year starter for Georgia Southern, an outstanding defensive back who has just graduated a year ago. Good stand, opening stand by the Georgia Southern defense here in the second half. Well, it's kind of a nice feeling when you know you can take out a, a Nick Davis and, and a Beavers and put in a Scott Davis, and here he comes up and makes two outstanding plays in a row for you. McCutcheon at his one. Ten men up for Georgia Southern. Let's see if they get pressure. Marco Bradham there. Oh, shanked off the left side. Brandon Roselle hopped and picks it up at the 50, giving ground. Good speed. Out of bounds. On the Georgia Southern sideline, he, he ran about 50 yards sideways, but only about two forward. Under eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Eagles on top, they have the ball. Play <laughs> raucous, Furman crowd taken out of this game early in the second half. Charles Bostic with his best field position of the afternoon. Looks deep, wants the big play and just Airs it out at the goal line, Steve, Ma Steve Payne, the man for whom that pass was intended. First time this afternoon, Jeff, that Charles Bostic and the Georgia Southern offense taking over inside Furman territory. Well, they're looking for the big play there. The, he really wanted Willis first, I think, streaking down the sidelines. Nice coverage by Andre Worrell of Furman, and then he went to his second man, Steve Payne. But he, once again, the pass is, is well overthrown. Bostic, nothing doing. Good defensive work along the front by Chris Turner and Mike Hardy. Hardy, number 79, a junior from Augusta, Georgia, played at Westside High School. Right there, getting penetration and staring down Charles Bostic. Here's third down. And Jeff, you think that soon we should see Joe Dupree of Georgia Southern. You have good reasons for that. Well, if you're going to put a Joe Dupree in, I don't think you want to put him in now when the, if the game gets tied up or you get behind. Put him in while you're ahead here because you've got about seven minutes left in the third quarter. You really haven't done a lot on offense. If you're going to use him, now's the time to use him soon. Bostic on the draw. Squirts free. First down. Still on his feet at the 30-yard line. Of course, then again, uh, <laughs> I might want to leave Bostic in there if he makes the big play. <laughs> what a How do you think the Georgia Southern <laughs> coaches feel? <laughs> A lot you know, Note. Uh, <laughs> what a great play by Charles Bostic. He gets a, a fine block out of his center, as always. Rusty Means, Rusty Parrish, but it's a nice block inside. And, and that was on, uh, I think it was Chris Turner, turns him out. But Charles Bostic gets all of that with running ability. Gain of 16, has the ball spotted at the 30. James Williams met hard. The pads popping at the line of scrimmage. Coda Suttle makes the stick. We haven't had Coda Suttle's name mentioned much today, Phil. And I mean, he is obviously their candidate, strong candidate for Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year, the way he's played the last three years. And was on, was a freshman, a true freshman when Georgia Southern 
beat this Furman team in that cha last championship game. Settle the defensive captain. Second down. Bostic. Bostic, H. Just burrows forward behind the surge of that offensive line. Let's give some credit up there. Rusty Parrish, the senior center from Thomasville. Franklin Stubbs, the left guard, and Miguel Ayub, the big 280-pound right guard. Good surge. They have, and this is a good drive going for Georgia Southern. They had their best field position of the day, the plus 47, but they put two first downs together, and that's the first time that's happened for them. They only had three first downs the whole first half. And with third down and three, Tim Stowers. There's a timeout for the Eagles. He and his offensive coordinator are going to talk it over with Charles Bostic. Certainly get down in this position. Ball spotted at the 24. You want to take advantage of it. Yeah, the scoring opportunities today for Southern have been very few and far between. This is an ideal position here to get themselves out in front and, uh, and a big third down. And this is what will be aching Jimmy Satterfield tonight. And every time he thinks back at the first half, two outstanding opportunities to punch it in and get points. And in our interview on the sideline before the second half, what did he reiterate? Probably said it three times. We didn't get points. Did some good things, didn't get points in the first half. Well, you ended up at the, at the end of the year. You added up, rather, at the end of the year. And you, you look at all the times you were in the scoring zone. And then what did you get from it? Did you get a field goal? Did you get a touchdown? When you come away 0 for 2, though, that is a, that's a glaring statistic. It really hurts you offensively. Clock at 5.50 of the third quarter. Make this third down and four. Georgia Southern offense will need to hustle out on the field. The clock already running, the play clock. That's inside 20. Charles Bostic, the quarterback, apparently unaware. Clock inside the 15, the play clock. Eagles have only converted on one of seven. Clock at 10. James Williams straight ahead, has a hole in the first down. James Williams on the quick hitter. Again, note, we need to give credit to that Georgia Southern surge, the center and two guards. They really got a nice job out of their left guard, Miguel Ayub, and their left tackle, Joey Ke Cushing. Rusty Parrish and uh, Miguel really roll out. And I think maybe the key block, and I just saw it out of the corner of my eye on the screen, was Rex Nottage, Nottage coming over and knocking the linebacker by the pile, allowing Williams to make the hole. You see the... Change stretched, first down by just a couple of inches. Franklin Stevens also number 56, clearing the way for number 36, the junior James Williams. You know, unusual to see tackles. Rex Nottage, 225 pounds, All-American candidate, maybe the strongest guy in their offensive line, hard-working guy, and got great quicks, which is a key to running this offense if you got your tackle. Four first downs for the Eagles in the second half, more than they had in all the first half. James it's amazing in this flex bone offense how things open up for the quarterback when the fullback is established. You know, Tracy Ham, the original outstanding quarterback at Georgia Southern, said it happened for him when Frankie Johnson became more prominent. And that's something the coaches talked to us about yesterday, just getting the fullback pounding in there. If you can get a fullback in there to, to crack about four a pop, then they've got to do something to shore up that inside. Bostic. His own number again going forward. Is the ball loose? Is not. Gain of two. Third down and about five. You've seen the concentration in this drive here has all been inside the tackles. Even the, the long draw that they got the big first down on Bostic, that came up inside the tackles. They've gone back maybe to some of the strength of this football team, and that is their inside they're inside three, not counting the, the tackles, but the big man, Miguel Ayub on the left side, Parrish the center, and running behind them, and Franklin Stevens, the young right guard. James Williams bowling inside the five-yard line. That might be the most impressive run of the day for Georgia Southern. Just brute strength straight ahead and inside the five, first down and goal for Georgia Southern. Really established a pattern here with this inside running game. Subtle unable to get over and cut it off. The left tackle, it looked like Joey Cushing making a nice block on Robert Beavers inside. Eight carries for 42 yards. This is the best game of James Williams' career. Under four minutes in the third quarter. Eagles leading at 7-0. 
Williams again. Williams. Down to the two yard line. Boy, this is a kind of drive too that takes a lot out of your defense. Furman's pretty fresh in that first half, didn't have to play a lot of defense, and yet here in the third quarter, this 47 yard, they start on the 47, they're down now to the three. They've had nothing but runs. Not a pass to get them down there. Second down and goal at the two. Bostic cuts up, stacked up at the one. Bostic keeping. Those Paladin safeties, hard hitting Jeff Coleman, the senior from Atlanta, Southwest DeKalb High School, right there to stand him up. Boy, I thought he had Chad Holmes, uh, the running back, open on the outside with a pitch. His decision, of course, he wanted to tuck it back inside. Awful, awful lot of people in there. He had him for a brief moment. You can see number 20 for Cedric Borders for Furman coming off. He gambles on the quarterback at first and turns loose Chad Holmes. Third down and one. A pair of tight ends. The power eye. Chad Holmes dotting the power eye. Bostic. Options. Cuts up. Is he in? The signal, yes, touchdown Georgia Southern. And again, the Paladin crowd goes quiet. There's about a thousand Georgia Southern fans making the 200 mile trip from Statesboro. And Bostic puts the Eagles and Tim Stowers club up by two touchdowns. Reed Haley. Out of Thatcher's hold, here's Reed Haley. It's good, and Georgia Southern taking command here in the third period. They get a break, make a, they make a big play to open the second half on Chris Wright's kickoff return. Get outstanding field position. Bostic with the big play, a 16-yard carry, and then he cashes in, Jeff. Well, here you see a, a nice job on the right side. I guess that's, I, I can't tell if that's Rex Nottage or not blocking on Livesay. Able, able to get a stalemate, and the hole opens up back to the inside. Charles Bostic just using his vision and a good athletic ability to get it over the goal line. Tim Stowers stalking the sidelines with his club up 14 to nothing. Well, we've got to give Charles Bostic credit. <laughs> the key to this, this offense, it sputters, it misses, it hits. You got to hang in there. He made the big play in that drive. That was the big draw play. And it was all him after he got by the line of scrimmage, his ability to run with the football. Well, Georgia Southern's defensive coaches said they wanted Jimmy Satterfield's offense right where they have it right now. Down in a circumstance where with a quarter remaining, they're going to have to put the ball in the air to get points on the board quickly. You can take a few chances when you're up 14 to nothing, depending on what you want to look at it from a defensive standpoint. A chance maybe to blitz a little bit if you have to, and yet they've been getting uh, outstanding pressure, talking about both teams, really, from their outside. Livesay and uh, Milo Sterling for Furman, Johnson and Alex Mash for Georgia Southern. Reed Haley to good top. Mark Tate to the top of the screen. Fielding the ball at the four. Up to the 20. There's a flag down as Mark Tate, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia, squirts down near the 22-yard line. Let's check out that flag. Well, 90% of the time, it's usually against the offense on a kickoff return. There's the clip. And again, a penalty hurting the Purple Paladins. play has almost been eliminated from football the blocking below the waist and clipping hitting people from behind the score, the Army 14, the 12. The half on the receiving team during the return 10 yard penalty first and 10 back it up halfway to the goal line ball spotted at the 10 See if we can catch a glimpse. I, I Billy see. Whitley, number 24. I think he just maybe takes his eyes off for a second, doesn't see where the guy is in front of him. And he has position on before he throws behind his back. The Paladins down by two touchdowns. Late in the third quarter. Billy Jones to his tight end. Nearly brought it down after the bobble. Well, Charles Bostic engineering the drive from midfield, going 47 yards, going 12 plays. 
In five and a half minutes, Charles Bostic with the two-yard touchdown run and the big one, a 16-yard burst. And you got to give credit to Tim Stowers, his head coach, for being patient and sticking with this youngster from Thomasville, Georgia. Coaches always catch the criticism, but very, well, very rarely get the, get the credit for patience. Here's Tremble getting outside, pounding up near the 20, near a first down. Nice job by Philly Jones not to let the ball go too soon. And here's Alex Mash, really, he's starting to chase Tremble from behind. He plays Mash very nicely. Mash able, though, to almost catch up with Carl Tremble. Instead, it was uh, Michael Morris coming over to make that tackle. Good block downfield by David Stamey, the Palladian Paladin basketball player. <laughs> David, uh, that's right, David Stamey played basketball for Butch Estes for four years. Eligibility expired, had one more year of school remaining, getting his degree and there's the spot, and it is, oh, just shy by the nose. Oh, they're going to call it a first down. Just the nose of the football. Thought they might have been a little eager right there. Let's finish on David Stamey. Played four years for the basketball team and then was a high school receiver, a record setting in the state of North Carolina in Statesville. Had 62 receptions his senior year. Jimmy Satterfield says, David, come on out. And <laughs> Satterfield says the guy has the best hands on the club. Billy Jones, the quarterback, a little breathing room with the first down. Looking deep, Bradley intercepted Don Hudson at the 43-yard line. Big play again by the Georgia Southern defense. He's got Bradley open early if he throws a timing pass. Instead, he kind of waits. He hangs his ball up there. But if he throws the ball after Bradley makes his break, Hudson is no factor as a safety. Instead, he gives him a lot of time to get over there, makes a nice reception on the ball. Talking about Don Hudson. Don Hudson getting congratulations. Boy, what an unselfish young man, Jeff. Here's a guy who played on the offense last year, defensive sophomore year. He's flip-flopped the last two years. Let's go down to the sideline and Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. Right before that series started, Tommy Spangler called his defensive backs over. He said, watch out for two things, a possible reverse and a play-action pass. Obviously, Don Hudson paid rapt attention picking off that last pass. As we approach the one-minute mark of the third quarter, there's an ominous note for Furman. The Paladins have not been shut out at home since November 27, 1982. That was by South Carolina State, 17-0. Right now, the Paladins trail Georgia Southern, 14-0. Under the final minute of the third quarter, there's a flag. James Williams met right at impact, uh, right as he got the ball. Well, there's the Coda Suttle that we've seen missing most of the first half, and uh, we haven't had his number call. He called him a little bit in the third quarter. He blitzes. He makes a blitz right up the middle. He's able to get both the, James Williams and Charles Bostic. Knocks them both down. Clock dead at 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Paladin defense needing to make a stand. Illegal formation on the offense. Five yards, replay second down. You can see it here, Franklin Stevens, he's double teaming with Nottage, Rex Nottage, and his, his assignment is to come off on the linebacker if he shoots, he just ignores him. Coda Suttle with a nice read and play. Kota Suttle, K-O-T-A. What a name for a linebacker. That's a football name. Second down at seven. Again, the Paladin defensive front. Third down and maybe six. Clint Crocker doing the job. You felt like in the third quarter, maybe they were sitting back. They allowed the, the Southern to split them out a little bit and really hurt them with the inside fullback. Right now, they're starting to shoot guys. First it was Coda Suttle, now you see Clint Crocker. They're not sitting back, they're trying to penetrate and make something happen. Maybe get a turnover, change a little bit of this momentum around. And now for one of the rare times this afternoon, 
As the clock expires in the third quarter, the Furman fans starting to get up on their feet and cheer for their defense. Uh, we have played three quarters in Greenville, South Carolina at Paladin Stadium. The Georgia Southern Eagles have come in here and put up two touchdowns as we head to the final period. To Southern into the Southern Conference. The Eagles uh, with a very firm how do you do through three periods at Paladin Stadium in Greenville. 14 to nothing. Third down and six. Bostic on the draw. First down up to the 43 yard line. Gain of 10, Charles Bostic. Well, why not? It worked big for him one time. They get a great block out of their center, Parrish. Two lead blocks in there. One on the linebacker. I think that's Williams going through and cutting down Coda Suttle. 56, the other guard, Franklin, does a nice job on Beavers. Big hole up the middle. Jeff, I think maybe Georgia Southern's quickness becoming a factor right here. First down, go right back to the bread and butter of that flex bone triple option attack, and that's the fullback straight ahead. Well, they've gotten stronger, Phil, no doubt about it, and that might even show as the game carries on. They've gotten stronger. The big thing probably kicked them off was that kickoff return, but since the half, they have turned this game around from where it was in the first half. The Tim Stowers Club, you can bet, as this score announced around Southern Conference stadiums today, opening some ears. The Eagles admitted into the Southern Conference in 1991. This past spring, baseball, tennis, and golf competed. The basketball team makes its debut this winter. Football follows next year, but today, the Southern Conference debut. Oh, well, we've got a break. We want to remind you that announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Sports South. Any use, free broadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Sports South and creative production services is prohibited. Phil Van Horn, along with Jeff Van Oat. Jim Noble working the sideline this afternoon at Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina. Charles Bostic cutting up field, but he's wrapped up in the arms of Ryan Livesey, a junior, six foot five inches from Norcross, Georgia. Clock on the move, Jeff, under three and a half minutes remaining. There's a timeout by Georgia Southern. Or is it? Let's double check. Yeah, no. clock still on the move. My mistake. Here's the punt unit. Bill Thatcher, a junior from Statesboro, Georgia, right there at the university. From midfield. See if he can drop it inside the 20. Darren Willis will fair catch at the three, maybe the four-yard line. Now that's execution on special teams. He really got the pooch, but it wasn't really a pooch. It was way up in the air. Allowing Willis to get down there. I think it uh, it, it looked as if maybe Twy Twyman uh, Tillman had a shot at blocking Willis and didn't do it. Tim Stowers Club in control early in the final quarter from Greenville here on Sports South. To nothing. Special teams doing the job today. When Tim Stowers took over for Irk Russell three years ago, said one thing he would like to maybe improve a little bit. Special teams. That's been the focus this afternoon. And after the punt, dropped dead. At the four-yard line, here's Furman going on the offensive attack. But now Tim said, Jeff, he said he was going to put emphasis on special teams, but we also need to give credit to the head coach, but to a graduate assistant, Harold Nichols. A graduate assistant is from Presbyterian College. That's where he played his college ball. A week ago, Furman put one on Presbyterian College, 43-7. to So Harold Nichols, payback. You got it. Second down and nine. Alex Bash in the backfield. Tremble cutting back. Big hit. Tremble putting the shoulder pad down. It's kind of important for Furman to be a little bit patient. They're backed up. Not a great area to operate out of, but they're going to they're going to get the ball three times. Here you can see Georgia Southern widening their defense. Look at Stockton playing very wide. He takes away the outside. And if you go back inside, you're going to get a, a big headache. There's a lot of people coming off their blocks trying to make a tackle. Sean Harrelson absorbing that blow. After Furman doubled up Georgia Southern on time of possession in the first half, nearly 20 minutes to 10. Georgia Southern controlling the clock in the second half. Billy Jones complete. Damon Bradley out of bounds at the 18. That's a first down for the Paladins. 
Just a simple out pattern. He's got the protection, simple drop back. He delivers a perfect strike after the break. You know, he was 12, seven out of 12, 70 yards the first half, one out of four till that pass. A lot of times, be patient with your offense and let your defense get the ball back for you after you score. Damon Bradley, who had 14 catches coming in today, had only one in the first half, one here in the second half. Philly Jones has some running room. Don Hudson, the safety from Warner Robins, Georgia, comes up with support quickly, but not before Philly Jones, the sophomore, picks up six. Boy, if you look, I think it's a little bit of a busted play. He runs into somebody almost here, and uh, I, I didn't see that number. And this is one of the better things that Georgia Southern has done today with their defense. They've controlled the running of Philly Jones. He wasn't a factor in the first half and has yet really to break loose. Both receivers split to the bottom. The give to Carl Tremble. Darius Dawson makes the tackle. Nick Davis getting up gingerly after that play. The spot in question of to whether it's a first down. A generous spot, and that is the second first down of this drive for the Paladins. That keeps the clock. The clock stopped, rather, but Furman up to the line, trying to pick up the pace here in the fourth period. The Paladins trail 14-0. Under 11 minutes remaining in the final quarter. Jones almost picked off again. Darius Dawson, the linebacker, a junior from Moultrie, Georgia, got a hand on it. Dangerous pass, Jeff. Well, it was. Uh, he's trying to hit, I think it's Jason Ensley of Furman. And uh, Darius Dawson, the big linebacker, he's got him man for man out there. And he's stride for stride with him. Two out pattern. They had Damon Bradley a little bit deeper running the out downfield. He's covered also. They need maybe to work a little bit of the middle of the field. The intended receiver, Jason Ensley, a junior from Dandridge, Tennessee, plays both ways. He is a safety and receiver. Second down and 10. Billy Jones pitches Trimble has Alex Mash out there waiting for him Trimble pounds ahead for a gain of three though Tommy Spangler the defensive coordinator with the headset on substituting Georgia. liberally right now on the Georgia Southern sideline nice to talk to Tommy yesterday he was on that Georgia national championship team of, of 1980 certainly came from uh, a lot of success in a program into another successful program. Third down for Philly Jones. Inside screen, Damon Bradley off his hands. Who's that creating havoc in there? Number 97 of the Georgia Southern defense, Virgil Harrington, drove his blocker into Damon Bradley's pass route it's an inside screen that a lot of teams are, are starting to use the last couple of years and it needs a little bit of time to develop not a lot but uh, Virgil Harrington I don't know if, if he knew what was going on or not but he was right where the ball was Harrington a junior from Statesboro Brandon Roselle standing back at his own 33 wobbly snap no pressure McCutcheon's boot fielded and knocked down dead or at the 35 by Brandon Roselle. Under 10 minutes remaining in the ball game, Georgia Southern on top by a pair of touchdowns. Maybe they could put it away with this possession. Van Note and Van Horn here this afternoon as Georgia Southern trying to improve on a two touchdown lead. There's James Williams pounding forward. Keeps those big thighs and those feet moving. As the clock is on the move, now under 9.40 in the contest. This is where this type of offense is most dangerous, where they are trying to run the clock out, and the defense has got to do a few things. They've got to take a couple of chances to try to make a turnover, force something to give their offense the ball back quickly. Second down and seven. Charles Bostic stacked up and buried by Clint Crocker. Up Furman. Bostic has gone the distance this afternoon. Joe Dupree is back up from Macon High School. Southwest Macon has not played yet this afternoon. 
Once again, it's the, the defensive line, the three inside guys of Furman's defense. They've done a good job in this quarter. And that's McGowan and Crocker, and also the nose guard are stacking up the inside. Boy, look at this, incredible. In just the third period, Eagles exceed their time of possession for the entire first half. And they have a 14-0 lead to show for it. Bostic has room. Dancing out of bounds up near midfield. First down for Georgia Southern. Jeff, it's as if the defense did the job in the first half. Special teams gave them a lead, and now the offense is saying, okay, guys, it's our time to do the job, led by Charles Bostic, the sophomore. Well, they've looked much better this third quarter and into the fourth quarter. I think this is a this could be a pass, but I think he'd rather run it also. You notice he's got two receivers out in front of him, Shafton Fraley and James Williams, the running back. But they're in a blocking position more so than a receiving position. I think he'd like to run that rollout. Fumble. Bostic on it in a hurry. Second down. Well, we talked about how turnovers would be a factor. Jimmy Satterfield saying all week long, we cannot afford a fumble, which they did do when they were on their initial drive of the afternoon, first possession of the game, coughed it up when they're knocking on the door inside the 10. Georgia Southern gets that fumble, and yet the high-risk triple option flex bone of Georgia Southern has not given up a turnover yet. They've lost a fumble. They've had an interception. Talking about Furman, both those plays have hurt him. They're not going to be in the plus column today. Bostic. Outstanding defense. Mo Sterling, the junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, makes the stop. Played off his block. Played that option, the reverse pivot, excellently. Well, it's the opposite option, freeze option. Try to get him going the other way, countering back to this side. And uh, I think all four of those defenders we've talked about Mash, Johnson, Sterling, uh, and uh, also uh, Livesey. They've all had outstanding days playing this option today. Clock on the move, under seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. Bostic rolling again. Going to cut back. 45, 50. Not nearly enough. That brings up fourth down in the punt unit. But, Jeff, right off the bat, we think of Bill Thatcher, the junior punter for Georgia Southern, on his last boot, nailed it inside the five. Yeah, they've got to do a little something here. Uh, he's got a much longer kick, and I don't think you'll see him trying to uh, uh, just pooch it and try to keep it down close, but he might want to get that inside the 20. Maybe he has a kick out of bounds. You know, the left foot kicker, the ball comes down different. And if you don't see a lot of left foot kickers, you have a tendency to misjudge it. I saw that in the, the Bears-Giants game last week with the Gardaki kicking for the Bears. Chris Gardaki played his college ball here at Clemson, South Carolina. Grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Thatcher's boot, fair catch, Andre Worrell landing at the 17-yard line. Let's take a timeout. Under six and a half minutes remaining from Greenville. Down 14 to nothing. Furman sophomore quarterback Billy Jones forced for the second consecutive time to start a drive inside his own 20. Straight drop. His tight end, Mark Wild, incomplete. Should have been caught. Let's go down to the sideline. Here's Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. Just got back from the Georgia Southern defensive sideline. The Eagles are no longer worried about Furman driving the ball down the field. What they want to avoid is a big play. If Furman comes out in a spread formation like you and Jeff have mentioned throughout the game, the Eagles think that they have the answer. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Jim, let's keep an eye on Damon Bradley. Number 15, he's down at the bottom of the screen. David Stamey, the senior, set to the top. Straight delay, Carl Tremble. Stacked up by Darius Dawson, who then gets company. That brings up third down. A lot of times, team will run the draw on the second play of a drive when they've been trying to throw the ball and they know they're going to have to throw. I like the draw on the first down and then go with the throw. <laughs> you know, six and a half does the other. When it works, it looks great. Third down and eight. Make that seven. Plenty of time, Philly Jones. Again, has Wild, but he is at least three yards shy of the first down. Scott Wild, a junior from Snellville, Georgia, Brookwood High School, the Broncos. Well, Tate Waters is their starting tight end, and 
And he's dropped a couple of days, to be truthful. I mean, this is a great catch by Wild, but he's got to get a little deeper. He's got to get the sticks on a third down play. You have to know where you need to go for the first down. And that brings up fourth down, and it looks like with just over five and a half minutes remaining in the game and down 14-0, Paladin's going for it on fourth down. <laughs> Officials have a timeout. Jeff, right now, both tight ends in there for Jimmy Satterfield, the Paladin coach. Not much else you can do in this situation. Phil, you need two, two scores to get ahead. I forgot about that eight-point rule for a second. So you've got to have, uh, you've got to get this first down. You've got to convert. They've come with his two tight ends a lot and run power. Damon Bradley set to the top of the screen. Heath Brownstead, the fullback. Carl Trimble in the eye. This is Trimble. And he's met. Spins back toward the line of scrimmage, but he should be stopped. Alex Mash, we have been calling his name all afternoon. The All-American makes a big time play. That may have stopped him shy of first down on fourth and a couple. Let's be patient for the spot and the chains. I don't believe they have it. Uh, it's hard to tell, but I mean, he just, they had no surge at the point of attack. He tried to duck it back inside, talking about Carl Trimble. Really not much there. The surge came from the defensive line of Georgia Southern. The measurement at least a yard shy. And Georgia Southern takes over. Jimmy Satterfield with his hand on his hip. And we can see some of the Paladin fans off the measurement start to head for the exits. Well, Tim. Tim Stowers and the coaches, when they get together tonight, I'll tell you one of the first things they're going to think about, Jeff, is what would have happened in that Florida A&M game if Alex Mash is anywhere near what he is doing today. They said he's at 90%. James Williams busting free inside the 10. The big fullback from the 27 down to the two-yard line. And the second thing he's going to say is, boy, I'm glad I didn't go and make a switch of quarterbacks. Here's, uh, here's Williams. This is a great cutback. That play is designed to go off right side. He bends it back to the left and then heads north-south with it. He's had a real big second half. I'm not sure if he's got 100 rushing today, but he's close to it. It's got to be his biggest day of his career. Eagles come with the power eye package. Williams, a fullback. Chad Holmes, the freshman, dots the eye. He has that clean white jersey. Bostic cuts it up, touchdown! His second of the afternoon. Well, that puts this one out of reach with 5-10 remaining. And it's such a misleading score, too, because if Georgia Southern does not, in the first half, block a field goal, doesn't come up with a fumble down there, uh, this is a different ball game in the second half, even if they get the kickoff return in the third quarter. Reed Haley has been perfect this afternoon. Still is. And with five minutes, 10 seconds on the scoreboard, Georgia Southern. How do you do Southern Conference? They come into Paladin Stadium and lead 21 to nothing. Georgia Southern 21. Furman shut out so far this afternoon. Charles Bostic, a pair of touchdowns. He has five on the season now. You know, Jeff, I said, the coach is saying, what if Alex Mash is healthy? What if the same guy is wearing number seven today showed up <laughs> in the opener? That is not the same guy who wore number seven, Charles Bostic I'm talking about, in the first game. Not nearly the same guy. He's been outstanding the second half. Billy Whitley on the near sideline from the five. Shaking. And wrestled down at the 16-yard line. Craig Richardson, a split in, senior from Brunswick, Georgia, down there on the coast, gets first contact. Well, let's take a look at that touchdown run. Strong side option. And he just, he just finds a little bit of a crack. He gets a block on Jeff Coleman from, uh, I think that was Henry Parrish, who had a little bit of, of a block on Jeff Coleman and able to just to inch it in. Two plays give the big play to James Williams. Off the hands of Damon Bradley who was trying to tiptoe out of bounds. James Williams busting that 25-yarder, and that set it up. You know, Bostic is just not the, 
confidence. Probably the big difference in the second half. But then again, with big holes in the line like that, got to give credit to Rusty Parrish, the center, and those two guards because he's had the opportunity to do his job unmolested relatively here in the second half. So much easier to play with a seven-point lead, too, when the, the pressure pack of, of this game, nothing to nothing being the kind of game it is. The tight end. Up near the 23, maybe the 24. Let's see where they spot that ball. Tate Waters, a senior from Wheeler High School in Marietta. Gets out of bounds. Clock stopped at 4.53 with the Paladins trailing 21 to nothing. Furman has the ability to have an effective passing game. They had it in the first half. They had a couple drop balls, too. He was 7 out of 12. But I think there were about three drops. Tate Waters had a couple go off his hands in the first half. Third down. They'll play four downs in this territory, trailing by three touchdowns. Billy Jones overthrowing Jason Ensley, the intended receiver at the 38-yard line. Well, here's a couple of things for Paladin fans and for Georgia Southern to listen to. 21-0, that's the score right now, would be the worst home loss since September, 19, or September 22 of 1979 when the Paladins were beaten by Tennessee Chattanooga, 45-14. And again, this would be the Paladins' first time, first shutout at home since 1982. Georgia Southern's defense, give credit to them, and Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator. 4.44 on the clock. Did they get the first down, Jeff? It did not look like it unless they get a real good mark. I think he's short of the 22 and or the 27. I think he needed to get to the 27. He did. He needed two yards. Well, no, they're giving it to him. There's the indication. First down. No measurement. Uh, clock stop. My perspective from up here might be a little bit different. Uh, 440. Now the clock on the move under 440 remaining in the game. Billy Jones gets Ronald Johnson, and he goes down. The mighty might, Ronald Johnson, 5'11", 190, a senior from Bradwell Institute in Hinesville, Georgia, has played outstanding this afternoon. Well, you see the right tackle, John Ludwig, the junior out of Lincolnton, Georgia. Uh, this is Ron Johnson again. This is the second sack of the day. He's got outstanding quickness off the corner. Inside handoff, Jason Ensley cutting up field. Now that hole closes in a hurry. Terrence Odoms, a sophomore from Fitzgerald, Georgia, big 280-pounder. Hauls him down. That brings up third down and 13. We are now under four minutes in the game. Furman trailing 21-0. Billy Jones has Ensley. That's going to bring up fourth down and 10. Jeff, they're not going to get it done with the dump passes with a control passing game here with under four minutes remaining. They need a little bit of better protection, too. Philly Jones is getting a lot of heat. He had a guy, I think it was Ron Johnson again, in his face as he delivered that ball. Ensley, the two-way performer, trotting off the field. And Furman going to punt it away. Forget fourth and 11. This is a surprise. Brandon Roselle, fair catch. Whoa, bobbles and hangs on at the 40. There's a flag down near the 25 of Furman. Well, a punt in this situation is a little bit of a surprise. Uh, down 21 to nothing. Well, you can see Jimmy Satterfield, hands folded. He was shaking his head. That'd have to be a surprise to both Georgia Southern fans and Furman fans. I mean... Obviously, there's no way to get uh, three touchdowns in a very quick three minutes. But nevertheless, uh, I, I would think that they would have gone for it on fourth unless maybe he had, a, he had some kind of fake play and, uh, and somebody didn't get the right signal. Penalty is declined. Well, Tim Stowers and his offensive coordinator, Mike Hodges, have made a decision. Charles Bostic is done for the day. A pair of touchdown runs, an outstanding second half. Very ineffective in the first, but an outstanding second half for Charles Bostic at the controls of the flex bone. And for the first time this afternoon, we get a look at six foot two inch sophomore, Joe Dupree, the transfer from the University of Georgia. He's rolling and wants to run. Just got to keep that Dupree. clock on the go right now if you're Georgia Southern's offense. Back on 
Clock on the move under 245. A lot of clean white jerseys in there for Georgia Southern. Letter sweater time, Jeff, is upon us. <laughs> well, they play a lot of people, both of these squads do, and I think that's one of the attractions about coming to a university that is a power that has a success in its football program, but that plays a lot of people. You feel part of the program. Two free, busting free. Joe Dupree looks poor on one play and nearly busted all the way on the next. Accommodations for the staff and crew provided by the Courtyard of Marriott in Greenville. Always make the Courtyard by Marriott your first choice in hotel accommodations when visiting the Greenville area. For reservations, call 1-800-321-2211 and ask for the special Furman Paladin rate. First and ten. The Eagles will keep it on the ground. Dupree, Dupree leaning forward, maybe a gain of three. It'll be Dupree and his fullback, Chad Holmes, the rest of the way. We approach two minutes in the ball game. Well, Georgia Southern has to be boosted tremendously by this outing this afternoon. Next up, the Eagles return home to take on Savannah State. The fans head on their way. Then October 10th, a big day in Georgia Southern history. The Eagles head up to Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. 14,879 today. Most of them have departed. Dupree, very cautious. Make sure he stays in bounds. The nearly 1,000 Georgia Southern fans who made the trip, they're still here. Well, the Eagles will head to Georgia in two more games. This program only started 10 years ago. At that time, Tim Stower is a graduate assistant over at Auburn. You can see him giving his players congratulations. And then the October 17th, after playing Georgia, the Eagles are right back here on Sports South against James Madison. Jeff will have uh, the Dukes and Eagles. Today, James Madison playing Youngstown State, the defending national champ. Dupree again weaving his way. I think you've seen uh, on two of these plays of this series that Joe Dupree's been in here, why they want to get him involved in this <laughs> offense a little bit more. Yes. A lot of natural running ability, a good-sized quarterback that can really move. We call this game pivotal at the beginning of the broadcast. Here's why. After today, Furman hosts VMI, and then they go on the road for three killer games. At Marshall, Thundering Herd National runner-up a year ago. At Appalachian State, that's the defending Southern Conference champ then at East Tennessee State University, a program which has been revved up under new head coach Mike Cavan. So the Paladins have their work cut out as they head into the Southern Conference regular season after today. Last 20 seconds of the contest. There's Jimmy Satterfield sprinting to midfield. Trying to seek out Tim Stowers, Pat and his players. Each other there. Both teams come to the center of the field to shake hands as this one's over and Georgia Southern has come to Greenville, South Carolina and shut out the Furman Paladins by a score of 21 to nothing. That's the end of the game. We'll be back after two minutes. Or hang on a second, let's keep it here for just a moment. Georgia Southern wraps it up with a win, 21 to nothing. Jeff, what's most impressive to you about how Georgia Southern comes into the Paladins den and wins impressively? Well, I think their defense. I think their defense kept them in the game until they were able to get a couple of breaks, the one uh, being the long kickoff return and the other the great field position for the 47-yard, the plus 47-yard line. The defense kept it there to get them that field position, got them an interception, got them a fumble, those types of things. And uh, the first half, I think, was done dominated by a good Furman football team, but they weren't able to capitalize. And you've got to take advantage of, of, of other teams' breaks. You've got to get it in the end zone. They didn't do it. Well, after a dead even first half, Chris Wright opens the second with a 95-yard touchdown on the kickoff return, setting the tone for this win. They're to make their presence known in the SEC. But when they Furman, 21 to nothing, a pair of touchdowns scored by the man standing by with our Jim Noble right now. All right, Phil, I'm here with quarterback Charles Bob. What did you guys say in the locker room to turn it around? Um, we knew we had to come out and get some going real quick. Um, 
special teams came out and sparked, sparked the drive, and hey, you know, we just kept it going from there. How much has this changed your frame of mind after those, after going one-on-one -on -one to open up? Um, you know, all along we knew we had a good team. You know, we, we're looking forward to coming out next week, having another good game. You know, I think we're ready to play some good ball. All right, congratulations. Okay. Let's send it back upstairs to Phil and Jeff. He said it's special teams play outstanding. Chris Wright streaking 94 yards with the opening kick of the second half. Well, Jeff, first time these two teams got together for the national championship, all offense, Georgia Southern wins. Second time, all defense, Furman wins. And the third meeting, the first in the regular season this afternoon, the second half, all Georgia Southern. Well, it was. Uh, it is, the stat that glares out at me is that 27 rushes for 65 yards, 2.7 a carry by Bostic. They're going to need a lot more production than that. But he did make the big runs, the big draw plays today. I think three times he took it on a quarterback draw and made Balls to two and two. Well, my name is Phil Van Horn. I've been with Jeff Van Oat this afternoon and Jim Noble down on the sideline. It has been our pleasure to bring you Southern Conference football here on Sports South. Well, once again, the final score from Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina, 21 to nothing, Georgia Southern with the victory.